Hello boys and girls, this is going to be a guide for how to start any league, race, ladder, whatever you want with Essence Drain. This specific video, as you might have noticed, is extremely long because it will be a general commentary on how to do just about everything. It just so happens that we're doing it with Essence Drain, but I'll try to go into detail when it comes to zones and items and general racing optimization if you want a shortened version of whatever is going on here with just the specifics for essence drain and maybe a little bit of commentary you can check out the video in the top right which you can access by just clicking the little card that pops up but you can use this for just about anything and also just to clarify this is solo cell found so we're not using any items that we have previously prepared and we are not grouping with anybody, but you could do so at any point. But this specifically is solo cell phone. So like any ladder, try and prep up before everything kicks off. In my case, you know, we are doing this as a preparer for you guys. So it's not an actual ladder start, but it is an ladder start. We don't have access to our stash or anything like that. And we're off. So, uh, Viper Strike is... Something that most people don't utilize, but in our case, it is pretty essential for a Hellrake kill if you want to do it fast, because Essence Drain Contagion generally is a little bit weird, and as you will notice, uh, for the majority of this guide, it will be uh, primarily Contagion, and we always try to focus on using as little Essence Drain as possible. Also, this guide will lead all the way to a Kitava kill. The reason for that is because we... Actually, I'll explain the reason for that in just a second. But yeah, we get to town. Make sure to pick up everything from Hillog because you will be needing those transmute shards from blue items, those alterations, and those wisdom scrolls. I personally like to check for movement speed boots. I couldn't get them there. And what you're looking for in terms of your weapons is either a blue, blue, blue wand blue blue as in the blue links and for it to be a uh, magic wand the reason for that is because we can use a recipe that i'll explain in just a little bit uh, to get plus one to chaos gems for our contagion and that's immensely useful and that's something that you will be using throughout the majority of the beginner run or we look for our end game essence drain setup, which would be a blue, blue, green wand. But do keep in mind that it, if if it is not a uh, magic item, you won't be able to use the plus one gems recipe, which means that you need a transmute. So those are the things that I check for on the vendor. And yeah, the reason why we go to mud flats after picking up the waypoint is because we want to get a little bit of XP just so we hit level three from Hellrake. The reason for that is that if you hit level 3, then you, well, you level up and then your vendors reset. So you can check again to get movement speed boots or another set of wands if you haven't gotten those previously, but generally you're not really going to have them after one vendor and specific and definitely not both the things. So make sure to stay focused on that and playing with Essence Drain or uh, Contagion early on, you don't benefit from Onslaught at all. Unfortunately, it's only with hits, so we only really benefit from the Quicksilver Flask. So we don't have to do it immediately because we don't get that Onslaught. Also, something that you might do if you're playing on Bestiary League or whenever you're watching, if this Bestiary is still available, uh, you might want to kill Roas. Killing three Roas and catching the boss will net you movement speed boots uh, that are rare. Which generally tend to be good enough to use for like the majority of the run. But if you don't find the boss like I didn't, don't worry about it too much. It's really not a big deal. Uh, you can do something like that later. And so you can see that I got a little bit of XP just to ensure that I were going to be hitting the level 3 from Hellrake. And like I, like I talked about before, the reason why this is only for Kitava is to explain everything that we really need to get on Essence Drain, and at that point it will be straightforward for you uh, what exactly you need to do to level, because the biggest difficulty with Essence Drain, I would say, is micromanaging your inventory. It's kind of a big deal, 
Uh, it's not as easy as people think because there's so many things that you need. You need Essence Drain, you need Contagion, you need Shield Charge, you need Wither Totem, all that sort of stuff. And you can see that with Hellrake, I clean him up, I pick up the Blight, I clean up the adds, I try to keep him dotted up with the Fire Trap, and for the most part we use our Viper Strike. That's also the reason why it's not that big of a deal if you don't get your wands and whatnot, because Viper Strike is actually like the sickest single target in the game outside of Molten Strike for early levels. But we did hit our level 3. Again, make sure that you pick up everything. We want transmutes, we want wisdom scrolls. This is super, super important that you vendor these items unidentified so that you don't get any alterations. I check for movement speed boots again. Unfortunately, no luck. Um. And then we vendor a bunch of stuff, and I check for ones again. I happen to pick up a three link blue, blue, blue wand that won't be particularly useful, but we also had access to a red, green, blue wand that I now vendor for chromatic, and I, yeah, and I get my colors. So I don't have a transmute yet, so this wand is only white. It's not a magic wand yet, so we can't upgrade it to a plus one with the recipe. The recipe is simply a blue wand and uh, a chaos gem so in our case because the viper strike and the lesser poison won't be useful anymore uh, it will be either one of those but you will be needing two wands most likely for either your blight or your essence drain later on so make sure to keep both of those gems and I switch to wands because now primarily we focus on that AOE and we want to have as much damage as possible with our contagion and the blight try to hit level 4 as fast as possible and just keep on keep on moving on and as you can see the contagion actually does a ton of damage it might feel a little bit weird to just use contagion and run away but if you pay attention to the xp bar um you know it's moving pretty fast i actually don't know oh you guys can't see the xp bar so you can always check your xp bar whether or not you're actually killing mobs whether you're moving like far enough uh, and that will be a big indicator for, in general, if you're trying to speed level, many times you're going to be off-screening things with dots and whatnot, so it's very important that you have a good loot filter that will alert you if something dropped from a dot behind you, specifically. And at this point, there's not too much focus on gear. Um, you're always looking to pick up armor and evasion gear, or preferably evasion gear. I know it's a big meme. Evasion this, evasion that, but in reality, evasion is the thing to use when you're leveling because, well, nothing's really going to hit you that hard, right? So armor doesn't do a whole lot outside of getting hit for less, but things generally don't hit you. And if they do hit you, they stun you, so you don't want to get hit. Evasion really helps out with that. It actually trivializes fights like Brutus and whatnot, so... We're just trying to find as much armor and evasion gear as possible. Preferably a better helmet, fish scale gloves, maybe some uh, raw boots, but like that really, that doesn't happen too frequently. And also a scale vest for our chest piece. You will notice that I am not equipping the chest piece, and this is very crucial because a chest piece, uh, not with all classes, with duelist if you get the right passive, it doesn't, but in general a chest piece reduces your movement speed so you try to avoid that and uh, because we don't need that extra defenses right now if you do have a fight that's a little bit tricky you can equip your your chest piece for just that fight and then take it off when you start running again but because we're so much on the move that uh, those couple points of movement speed actually makes a pretty major difference and yeah um we don't have the plus wand you can imagine that if we had the plus one wand Everything here would be getting like just instantly demolished and That's the cool thing about uh, Plus one chaos because for a normal plus one to gems recipe you need an alteration orb, but for chaos gems You only need to be level three uh, At which point the item will become usable and that's it, right? We just need it to be blue and we just need the gem. We don't have to worry about anything else It doesn't be have to be a gem of a specific color. I don't know why something froze there Whatever. We get the transmute, which like I mentioned is a big deal, because now we can make our wand blue. We got plus one to cold gems, not quite chaos, but as soon as we get to town we're going to be changing that. 
And again, keep in mind that I am paying close attention to items constantly. You want those large life flask, medium life flask, armor evasion gear. If anything, you want to at least settle on evasion gear. Generally try to avoid armor unless it's got uh, really good colors for you, which is rare, but it might happen. And also keep in mind that this run isn't like some sort of insane pace run, right? We don't have a plus one wand, we don't have movement speed boots, this isn't uh, some sort of super pre-prepared run, this is just an average run of what you can do in general. Oh yeah, and since we're on the climb, again, if you're playing in Beast Cherry, you want to capture three goats, three white goats, make sure that they're normal goats, not the goat shamans or anything like that, and then you want to capture the fawn, uh, the reason for this is because you can actually use the beast crafting to get a Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline, which not only is a second Quicksilver that really, really helps you out, but also the Adrenaline uh, pushes pushes you to the limit. Really pushes you to the limit. So yeah, we've got our wands prepared. We actually found another wand in the meanwhile, so I'm just moving my gems around so that I don't have to worry about that later. We hit the waypoint, you can log out. Uh, you can also just run. I personally like to go to the character selection screen. We pick up Void Manipulation. You will be needing two Void Manipulations. One for your Blight, one for your Contagion. Preferably three. I mean, if you can get your Essence Drain in, but that's probably not going to happen. And uh, yeah, because we had the Transmute, we're just going to do this. I think the other one is blue also. Oh no, I messed up. Okay. Yeah, so you see I just vendored the blue wand with the uh <laughs> i get confused here it's because so basically what happened my wand had uh, intelligence on it and because i changed it to a plus one to gems wand it doesn't have that intelligence anymore because it just completely resets the item so <laughs> i couldn't equip my other wand but that's absolutely fine we just equip everything else back up and uh, we're going for it and you can see that the damage really picks up here yeah, and also uh, this will be a full run, right? This isn't some sort of speed run. This is a full-on guide, so we will be doing trials, passives, everything that you can think of, and everything that you should be doing when you're leveling a character to whatever level you want, or if you're just starting off in a in a new league. So something that's very very important right now is to just get as much XP as possible. Contagion is a little bit unusual because technically it rewards bad play. And this is partially why I think a guide on Essence Drink Contagion generally works out the best. Is because when you're speedrunning, or when you're trying to level fast, optimizing what you're killing and what you're not killing, and uh, generally not overkilling, period, is like a really big deal. Because you always want to be in a zone that is... The highest possible level without penalizing your experience so you want to be in a zone that is three levels higher than you and every 16 levels of your character plus one level so in a level six when you're level 16 you can be in a zone that is four levels higher this is general ballpark it doesn't 100 percent work like that but if you want something to follow that is the general idea that you want to follow but with Contagion, because it gets so much more powerful with levels, you really want to focus on not necessarily killing every two mobs like I am here, but whenever you do see, you know, three, four mobs, yeah, you want to cast that Contagion because it's just really quick and it recovers your Quicksilver charges. And as soon as we will have two Quicksilvers, uh, it will really, really, really speed up. And we're getting XP on top of it, which means that we're killing even faster. So, in that way, you don't have to feel as punished because very rarely will you be actually too low level for the zone that you're running as you can be with certain things. That is something that I've seen uh, people struggle with quite a bit um, for, for a while now, really, that people generally just try to rush so fast that they fall behind on levels and they keep getting penalized and then they have to fall back on the previous zones and try to get those levels back up. Not a problem that you're going to be having with Contagion. Alright, so like I mentioned, we do have our fish scale gloves, we do have our battered helmet, we have a large life flask, two mana potions, I mean, Brutus doesn't stand a chance. 
Still not using the chest piece like I mentioned before, we want that movement speed boots, but as soon as we engage Brutus in the fight and we pull him, we put on the chest piece because we don't need to run around this fight at all. Now the reason why I pull him personally is because I don't want to deal with the adds as fast. And you can see that the evasion, the entropy, the entropy from that really does want there. So despite the fact that we don't have a massively large single target, uh, we do have two, two, three links. It is very easy to almost entirely face tank Brutus. We even get a little bit unlucky there and still we managed to face tank him quite well. Try to pick up all the blue items, actually a really big deal. Again, we're trying to get as many transmutes as possible because this character, due to the amount of items that it will need later on, needs a lot of transmutes. And I actually have gotten quite unlucky. Uh, this, Well, speaking of unlucky, I actually transmuted my wand to craft another plus one, but instead I just hit the plus one of the transmute. I mean, all skill, that's absolutely fine. Uh, if, you, if you feel like it, just go for it, you know? Just do it. Uh, but yeah, we will need a lot of those transmutes so that we can buy all of our gems because the toughest part of Essence Drain is optimizing our character and just trying to make the right decisions at the right time. So, after we've killed Brutus, um, the, we go to our menagerie and we kill the fawn again. Again, the reason for that is for the adrenaline. Just make sure to pick it up. You can see that I have like multiple recipes here because I played this league, but I'm not using anything from my stash. I don't know why I talked to that guy, but we're trying to get that, uh, that Quicksilver flask, which will now really boost up our damage. Just make sure that you have enough damage and you're over leveled enough, but not too over leveled. It's a very, it's a very precise thing. Uh, so that you don't run away from the range of the mobs because the mobs do take a little bit of time to degen and Contagion actually and most degens nowadays uh, have a range So even though the duration might still be on the mobs and even though you might be in range of the XP Contagion does have about like two screens of range so if you run too far away Unfortunately, it will not grant you the experience. Even if you're watching the XP bar, it will just not move for you at all. So do keep that in mind that if you are a little bit overzealous with your Quicksilvers, you might be costing yourself experience, which will hurt you in the long run because we are trying to remain overleveled, especially on the Shadow because equipping a Flame Dash is very, very helpful because we pick up damage over time notes and it just... Uh, amplifies our contagion naturally so much more especially since we still don't have movement speed boots which is a big deal which you could have but that is something that the reason why i chose this replay in specific to talk about is because we don't get everything in this run you know we do struggle with getting a plus one and it does take our time and i think we get like movement speed boots super 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 late and uh, i don't even have like all my gems set up all the way until the very end and that's absolutely fine you know all of these things will be tricky will be problematic uh, but this is the cost of leveling with something like essence drain that is just super powerful god damn definitely pick up the jeweler orb you want to be picking up all sorts of currency especially if you see fusings or chance orbs those are super important the reason why chance orbs are important is because you're going to need blasphemy you're going to need um, fortify you're gonna need at least two efficacies it might seem like a chance orb is a pretty simple thing to find but when you're speed running it's tough you're not gonna get them and the reason why you want fusings is because you can buy chance orbs for them <laughs> I mean if you're on a trade league maybe you can trade it with a friend that's absolutely not a problem but if you're trying to do this solo self found then yeah Every single one of those little pieces of currency you should have a big notification for on your filter and you should really be focusing on picking those up. The reason why we also want flame dash is because of this. If you have level 10, you can keep on moving while the sirens sing and that way you're never going to be stopped in any tracks. And a cat is meowing. Why is a cat meowing? You guys hear the cat? Damn. So yeah, again, we want to level as much as possible. What is very crucial as a goal in general um, for Act 1 with Essence Drain is that you hit level 11 and just a little bit more um, 
just so you can level up your blight for Merveil. That plus one level actually really, really, really helps, especially if you have a plus one like I do. Um, because your gem effectively would be 14 or 15. And that Merveil is only level 12, so you can just absolutely demolish her. I guess I didn't talk too much about layout. <laughs> Maybe I should have, but there's just always so much to talk about this sort of stuff, specific to, like, a build that, yeah, we're kind of running into problems. But obviously, in terms of the skill tree, as you might have noticed, just travel through the shadow, chaos nodes, and then entropy. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. You don't really have another option. You could do some shenanigans with, like, freeze pulse and onslaught generation and stuff like that, but... I did try to keep it as simple as possible for this guide and uh, you might witness me failing the one thing that I said that you have to keep uh, your tabs on and stay focused on which is hitting that level 11. You can see that I haven't quite hit level 11 and my gems haven't quite leveled up so my Mervo kill will be a little bit slower however I do have an acceleration shrine which means that I should pretty easily 20 stack Mervo and if you will be level 11 this fight will look exactly this the same way you don't want to be using fire trap anymore because it doesn't deal enough damage and she's got like energy shield so you just don't want to be touching that energy shield at all some general questions from chat how does he allocate points without clicking confirm you do that with control click oh what's up jake and bacon um how do i zoom out my map by clicking the minus next to my numpad if you don't have a numpad on your keyboard and all that stuff I don't know what to tell you. I actually don't know which key binding it is. I haven't heard anybody fix it. We pick up everything. Everything that we can pick up, anything that you think is useful, we pick it up. We need those transmutes. You can log out after the Mervil fight. You don't have to pick up the waypoint in Act 2. The waypoint will be there automatically. And I'm just trying to check for movement speed boots. I'm still picking up every pair of boots that I find. I'm trying to get some decent gloves because obviously those would be helpful, especially if they are on an armor evasion base. Very important. Unfortunately, we didn't quite get it and we do get our essence drain. We don't need a transmute for that. We just naturally get it because shadows OPOP and we continue to level. Don't have to worry about anything else in Act 1 anymore until you actually have transmutes. But hopefully you're going to have a little bit more luck than I did in this run. And you're just going to have enough transmutes to be able to buy, you know, that uh, wither. Although you won't have to worry about that until you have a spell totem from the library. So it's not that big of a deal. Also, you don't necessarily have to um, log out after after Mervel if you feel like you need to vendor and whatnot when you enter Cavern of Wrath. It's absolutely fine to also go back to town, vendor, pick up your essence drain, and then just after Mervo, progress further and not have to log out whatsoever. If you do see an exile, kill it. You want to kill every single one of these little guys because they give you items that will carry you a long, long way. Generally, items, exiles are like the only sorts of decent items uh, when you're leveling, so. It's a pretty big deal that you kill them, especially if they're next to a box or coming out of the box. It is nice. Mm. Mm, okay. And yeah, we want to kill as much as possible. You can see also that I went to the right. Some people go to the left. I used to go to the left, pick up the waypoint in Western, and then go to the right. I mean, I deem it unnecessary at this point. Um... I used to do it because it was like the levels of the zones were a little bit different and it was easier to control things and whatnot. Um, but nowadays I, I really don't care and you shouldn't either for little things like that that generally overcomplicate your thing for just a couple seconds more uh, <laughs> speed. Except it's not actually in the case of this run it's actually not a little bit more. And yeah we hit level 12. We get our essence drain. You can see me struggle with links. I don't quite know what to do. I don't have any boots or a chest piece and I need blue sockets and strengths and the amulet equip it and the mobs chasing me. I get it. It's a little bit hectic. All right. But you don't have to be doing this as fast as possible. Just take your time. Try and uh, keep your character safe. Make sure that you're using contagion on the right mobs. And... Uh, 
Yeah, ID your chests. And also don't get hit by a, like a lot of zombies. Also, use your essence drain. It's a pretty big deal. And yeah, temporarily, unfortunately, I had to de-equip Blight. The most optimal setup, in my opinion, right now... Is to have... Remember those two plus one wands? In my opinion, having Essence Drained on there and Contagion on there is very important by having at least either a 2-link or something. Uh, Blight is also super important because Blight does more damage than Essence Drain. So if you're trying to deal with like a blue pack of mobs and spread your Contagion like I am trying here, I have to use Contagion, you should be using Blight. I think I got Movement Speed Boots there. Or maybe I didn't. No, I don't think I did. But I am looking to equip as many pairs of boots as possible. So yeah, Blight here, you can see I'm struggling with my... Uh, that's right. But a Blight would have covered the entire pack and the, mo the initial mob would have died way faster because it's already dotted up by the Essence Drain anyway. So all of that stuff would have been dead and if you pay attention to the XP bar, it's constantly moving even when those mobs are dead off screen. So... In Sins, you've got two choices. You can either pick up the waypoint and come back to this later because you might have noticed that I have been skipping skill points and certain things, but I have been doing trials. Um, so you can skip the uh, waypoint and immediately go do the trial, or you can pick up the waypoint and do the trial later, maybe when you've got your movement speed boots or a little bit more mobility through something else. Maybe you might even want to wait all the way until you have uh, shield charge. That's going to take a while. Make sure to be very careful in this room, however, because sometimes... It's a real nightmare here. That's why so certain people uh, run this later, is because if you get a back hit of conductivity, you have no lightning resistance. Those sparkers can really, really demolish you. Almost opened a pack. I saw those blue mobs on it. I want to open it, but uh, it's got freezes you. So obviously we don't we don't want to die to not being able to move, man. So try and pay attention to those boxes. Don't just sporadically open them. Try and ID them and take your time with uh, getting through those boxes. But as you can see, I am still trying to kill as much as possible with Contagion while using as little Essence Drain as possible too. This boss fight is going to be a little bit awkward. Again, you should have a Blight. In my case, I do not have a Blight. So it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit funky. But I can just spam my essence drain and he goes down fairly quick. But if you do have blight, he will die really fast. But this is the struggle. This is why oftentimes you're going to be having to make these tough decisions with essence drain. And I think this video should hopefully highlight it well. Also, unique items vendor for one scroll of wisdom. So you should definitely ID them for those alterations if you're looking to sell it for currency. Yeah. I am using stupid fat hobbits filter. Yeah. <laughs> Streamer is practicing with just stupid purple skills. We could clearly, we could race with a clearly superior skill like Sunder. This is true. I don't know. Also, you can just play Sunder. I mean, you can skip this entire guide and just play Sunder. It's absolutely fine too. So yeah, after we're done with sins, we're heading over to Weaver. Make sure to pick up the waypoint on the way, and I guess maybe now we have a little bit more time to start mentioning certain tips uh, with zones and whatnot. On riverways, stick to the road. It's not a big deal. If you've got Blink Arrow, if you've got Leap Slime, if you've got Flame Dash, you should have any of these skills by now. Uh, stick to the road. And most of the time you're gonna have the you're gonna be finding the majority of the packs out there anyway. And it's the fastest way to get to Western Forest, which is your next concern. White Trickster, um, the reason why in particular we're going to be using Trickster for this, although for the leveling portion it doesn't matter, is because it just gets a lot of attack speed, a lot of damage. Trickster pretty much gets everything for Essence Drain that you can possibly think of. Occultist is more of a defensive choice, which I personally am not a huge fan of. And also, this guide is specifically made in mind of uh, Gazi's... Uh, essence Drain Guide, so you guys can check the description below the video, although if you're watching on stream you can't do that. 
for Gatsby's Essence Drain because it's a really well explained guide and he responds to all questions. So if you ever have any Essence Drain questions, then yeah. Also, as you can see, I pick up the waypoint and I know where to go for Weaver. The reason for that is because Weaver is always across the road from the waypoint. So you could see that the waypoint was in the middle, or excuse me, the road was in the middle, the waypoint was on the right on the of the road, which means that Weaver will be on the left on the road, and c consequentially, Alira will be on the right, on the same side as the waypoint, on the opposite side of Weaver. Something to keep in mind, just if you're entering a new zone, or if maybe you've allowed the zone to reset, this is something to just allows you to get through a little bit faster. But while we're talking about all of this stuff, I am desperately, I am desperately looking for some um, blue sockets. Desperately looking for them. Unfortunately, it hasn't quite worked out. Eventually, I do fall. I give up and I pick up a chess piece. It's just been too frustrating. I really need this chess piece. I just want to start using Blight. It takes me way too long to kill certain things. Blight helps out a little bit too much. But do keep in mind that this whole time my Blight has been leveling in my offhand weapons, which now I switch, I pick up my Blight, I put it on a chess piece, I do a bunch of other stuff because I'm in the middle of a fight, I don't put up my chess piece, it's a struggle, I don't know what's going on, I cast Blight, things are dying, okay. Great success. We did it. This is gonna be this is gonna be happening a lot. You're gonna, you're gonna be doing things. So as for heralds and all that sort of stuff, we're playing with essence drain. You don't need to concern yourself about that whatsoever. But you do need a blood rage, and you do need controlled destructions. So at this point, you should have at least two, you know, one, two, three alterations. As long as you have one, you're absolutely fine. So you really have to worry about because you need that blood rage. The other gem that you can pick up from Sins is a Arctic Armor, which I should be equipping at some point. It does help a little bit, but it's generally not that big of a deal. And sometimes it can make mobs a little bit slower so that they so that you walk out of the range of contagion a little bit faster, which is tricky. But generally you take less damage when face tanking, and that's the important part because it allows you to Cast your Blight and just kill things as fast as possible. Blood Rage for what? Blood Rage generates Frenzy Charges, which gives you damage and cast speed, which is pretty big because, again, we're trying to get our Contagion to kill things without us casting Essence Drain. Every now and then, you're going to see me casting Essence Drain. If it's a blue pack and whatnot, but like you just saw with that pack, the, mob di the mobs die with just a well-linked uh, Contagion on that plus one wand. And eventually, the uh, Blood Rage obviously itself also gives attack speed, so that will be super powerful with Shield Charging. <clears throat> so yeah, after we've done Weaver, our next goal, as you might have noticed, is Kraten. I think I kill everybody in this guide, but depending on what you're running for your build, you might want to help someone, although for Essence Drain, it can't really... Imagine who that would be. Maybe if you're MOM Essence Drain, you help Alira just for the comfort of the resistances and the flat mana, but I personally wouldn't recommend it. So Alira is my next goal to kill. If you're ever leveling another character, it is absolutely fine to deal with Kraten. If you want to, for instance, help Alira and then go to Oak, pick up the ruins to uh, the waypoint to ruins and then go back to Alira. it doesn't really take up a whole lot of time, and uh, it's absolutely fine. You can see I'm also swapping my gems now that I've got my links a little bit under control. I don't need my Contagion to deal damage on these boss fights. I want to focus for my Blight to deal damage, but for general AoE clear, I want Contagion. So that's why in my setup currently, since I only have a one link Blight, I switch my Contagion with my Blight, for those boss fights, and that way I have a three link, or well, a, a three link? Yeah, it's still a three link. A three link plus one blight, which is a ton of damage, even on humanoids such as Alira, it does a lot. And also, you might notice that I still haven't done skill points. This is a decision I haven't forgotten. You shouldn't be doing skill points this early, although, if you do have movement speed boots and you feel like you do 
enough damage, then I think around the time when you're picking up uh, Ruin's Waypoint is the earliest when you should be really getting skill points. And since we are getting a lot of damage nodes now, I think I'm going to go for it pretty soon. And yeah, keep in mind your trials too. Um, so we've got Prison Trial, we did Sense Trial, but for Act 2 we also have to do Crypt Trial, which is very important that you run it within your uh, XP so you don't get penalized. You're not too high level for the zone. We switch out the gem. You're not too high level for the zone, and therefore you can get the maximum amount of XP. Even if you are level... 20 and the zone is level 17 you're still going to be getting the maximum amount of xp therefore yeah you could be running something else to get more xp because the mobs would naturally give more xp but as long as you're not getting penalized you're still doing great um, just make sure that your contagion is able to one shot which really uh, increases your clear speed because it gives you those uh, quicksilver charges no After leveling with DD Contagion, would it be a ton of regrets to le to later move to an RF SR Trickster later in the Reyes race? It really depends on your setup, man. I, I don't think I'm able to answer that. I don't think I'm able to answer that. But yeah, you can see I have just enough damage to move uh, with a full speed uh, flask or full speed adrenaline, the Quicksilver and be able to, for the most part, one-shot mobs here too, even if they're blue. Which allows me to keep up more quicksilvers, therefore we're going faster. But I would prefer to have movement speed boots right now, it's just, yeah, maybe I did it. Actually, maybe I made a mistake, I did it a little bit too early for this run because I didn't quite have the mobility that uh, I previously mentioned. But I did want those damage nodes, so hell yeah, let's go for it. Because, you know, after we pick up the degeneration notes, we're going to go for atrophy. So we're going to be picking up a little bit of survivability there. But you don't need to worry about it as long as you're gearing for that evasion like mentioned before. And uh, yeah, then we're going to pick up atrophy, which is even more damage. We want to make sure that our contagion is killing things without the need to cast essence drain. I cannot emphasize on this enough. I know I get a little bit confused here, I see. Uh, I know many people are like, oh my god, C Contagion Essence Drain leveling so slow. It really isn't. It's just most people overkill way too hard. They cast Essence Drain left and right constantly. And you just have to keep in mind that, you know, if you could be using one ability, but instead you're using two, you're essentially cutting your your uh, clear speed in half, right? If you disregard the ability part, I suppose. But yeah. Just as long as you've got Blight for these sort of fights, you're totally and absolutely fight. Fight? Fine. There you go. <clears throat> Pre recorded. Yeah, I think Scorching Rays is alright for leveling. I'm not a particularly big fan, but yeah. You can see that, like I mentioned before, I'm killing these mobs, right? So I don't quite have the firepower to deal with them exactly the way I want to. But because these mobs are level 17, even though they're lower level or the same level as me, I think. Um, I can kill them fast enough and they give me decent experience. So I'll just murder all of them. Also deal with the captain. Which you can also do when you do a Lyra. I don't know. I personally didn't deem it worthy, therefore I uh, run it later on. I did the graveyard, I didn't pick up the skill point yet, now I'm going to submerge. Uh, the reason for this is because you have to pick up the Act 2 skill point in Act 1, so yeah. Also sorry for the alerts, I guess I forgot those. Mm -mm. I don't know, if people have questions in the chat, something that I didn't cover, then yeah, I'll be glad to do it. If the submerged layout, like you just saw, goes to the left, the flooded depths can be either top or bottom from the ramp that goes up to ledge. Uh, as far as I know, there's no rule for it. Luckily, though, if uh, if the ramp up goes to the right, so you run right from the waypoint. Um, if the ramp goes to the right 
then you can only go left down for flooded depths. And if the ramp goes right and up, you can only go to the right. So the layout that goes to the left, the one that we just had, is the only one where you can't guarantee yourself, as far as I know, um, which direction you need to go. Yeah, clean up our inventory a little bit, get a bunch of skill points, pick up a whole lot of damage in just a second, hopefully. But first... Oh, I, got, uh, I have uh, three blue helmets, so I am buying a, another control destruction for our Blight. And you can see I also move gems so that it's easier for me to swap those gems around for a boss fight. We've picked up our last damage over time node, and we're going for... What's that note? Written in blood. There you go. I'm probably getting annoyed out of my mind. I can't remember if I was or not, but my there you go. But my map is <laughs> is not minimized. Which at this point, once you started using it, you really can't get over it and you always want to keep on using it. So we minimize our map and we just keep on keeping on. The flooded depths was a little bit complicated, but trust me, it's a simple concept if you actually listen. Same for Vol Ruins, actually. Vol Ruins only has like four layouts, but it's super confusing to people because sometimes you get a master or a corrupted zone and it actually really messes with you. And so anytime you get that, you're like, okay, Vol Ruins are an absolute nightmare and I totally don't understand it. But most of the time it are actually pretty simple. We actually got the high, the, in my opinion, the most difficult layout because it's the layout that can either go top left or it's just like a really long swirly because there's a master somewhere in the zone. So I might head down and yeah, you see that I that I checked top left and all this sort of stuff. But if you want more information on layouts and whatnot, I highly recommend you check out Engineering Eternity's guide. But do keep in mind that some of the videos that he's got posted on like Act 1s and 4 are a little bit outdated sometimes. Uh, because GGG has added like a bunch of different layouts um, since the release of his original videos. So they're not 100% accurate anymore, but they're still really, 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 really helpful, in my opinion. Yeah, you minimize by minus on the numpad. So yeah, at this point, we just want to hit level 18. The same rules still apply. You want to be getting a lot more XP than you typically would. Oh yeah, I go to Crypt. That's absolutely fine. So, because we're just about to hit level 19 even, I go to First Rhine Ruins because the zones in the other areas are only going to be going up, but this zone will only be staying at the same level. So because we need to do this zone, and I am capable of one-shotting the mobs, we're just gonna go do the trial. Hell yeah. Get 100% of that experience. Why not? And again, pay attention, even though I'm not seeing the mobs, the experience bar keeps keeps on keeping on. And even here, I move away from these mobs and the XP bar just keeps on going up. Hey, Mr. Bino. Blight and Contagion are linked with control destruction and void manipulation, right? Correct. Um... So that's a little bit tricky. I guess I should have addressed this a little bit earlier, but the reason why we needed blue, blue, green was because we needed arcane surge, void manipulation, and our ability. Once you get to level 18, you can equip that uh, controlled destruction, which means that you will only be needing one arcane surge for the abilities that you use. Obviously, your Contagion, you want to do as much damage as possible, and no matter what, a Control Destruction is more damage than even a proc uh, Arcane Surge. So Contagion is out of the question. Um, then you've got Blight, which has been fixed recently, where if you use Blight continuously, it actually costs the mana, and you can sustain your Arcane Surge. But we only really use Blight for single target. And then you've got your Essence Drain, which is like a follow-up for your Contagion every now and then, which is for the most part where I would recommend Arcane Surge. The best setup would be if you were to have Arcane Surge on your uh, Flame Dash. But 
like I mentioned, it might be a little bit tricky to get those sockets, especially if you're trying to focus on evasion armor gear, because generally those items have red and green sockets, and we want blue. So it's a little bit tricky, but nothing a bright mind can't take care of. So now that we've done the trial, we swiftly try to get the vault. And our time's not super good, but it's not super bad either. I think this is de definitely something that somebody with a little bit uh, better RNG with those movement speed boots, you know, potentially some drops, maybe a little bit more, uh, a little bit less struggle with the sockets, with just a little bit more paying attention or a little bit more luck. Uh, can definitely can definitely beat no problem. Actually, I had a run before this that was like quite a bit faster, like I think four minutes faster or something. So yeah, it makes a pretty big difference. So Northern Forest, a pretty straightforward zone. Nothing that we have to worry about at all. We do pick up our written in blood so that we become even tankier. We are the tank. Unfortunately, we can't do anything with our mana, but that will come later. The goal of this is to have Mind Over Matter with the nodes behind it as soon as we hit Kitava. So after we pick up Atrophy, that's where we're going to be traveling. But as it is right now, pay attention. You already see that there is a master. Oh, I actually remember this. I... Uh, Maybe I should move move the camera for this one because this is a good one. So um, let me let me fix this for you guys. So this is me from the past, right there. Same shirt, by the way. And uh, you gotta pay attention to this zone because if the entrance to Northern is on the left side, generally the entrance to the ancient pyramid will be either on the left or on the middle up and the same thing exactly happens if the entrance is on the right side of where the waypoint is so in our case we know that we got to go left and you can see from my face i'm saying a bunch of stuff pretty sure i'm playing some music so i can't unmute but basically what i'm saying is i'm gonna be a greedy rat i should move three more centimeters over there but I won't because I'm a greedy rat and you know what most of the time it's not there anyway so instead I make the wise, the wise decision of not checking to the left and even here I make the decision to not check to the left and see whether or not the entrance is there and you know what turns out that those couple seconds and at this point I realize I realize what's going on Look at the, that's a that's one happy rat because I know that those three centimeters that I didn't move to the left you know that's gonna cost you and that's a decision that I consciously made and uh, it is what it is we got to make up for it now so at this point I already know um, that we messed up I just make my final uh, left turn to see if it's there Unfortunately, it was there. Greedy rat. What can you do? Sometimes you make these decisions, you know, if it's a race, it can pay off or it can be this. But you can see that knowledge of layouts really helps out. So generally, people always want to just like jump in and freaking immediately get their levels and whatnot. And they want to learn how to level fast and think that there's not much to racing in general. But knowledge of layouts is a pretty major one and you can see how much it can really bite you in the ass if you either uh, make a silly choice or just don't know whether or not the decision that you're making is a smart one. More Contagion. Elrond, not good. Masters are not good. Sometimes. I mean, there's certain zones where masters uh, make your instance shorter, but generally in these bigger ones, it's kind of tricky. So Ancient Pyramid. Funny fact is actually a pyramid and this means that every floor of this pyramid gets smaller and smaller. But what's also cool about that is that on the first floor, as you saw, the, the stairs to the next zone can be in any of the corners. However, in the next zones, the stairs up 
are always across from the stairs down. So in this case, see how they're across? Corner, 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 across. So in this case, corner, corner, exit. Yeah? So as long as you're aware of that, you can save yourself a little bit of time. Uh, I know. Mind-blowing stuff. But many people get lost in the zone, and I think that's generally something that helps. So Vol is a little bit of a break, you know. You can drink your monster. But what you really want to be doing is optimizing your setup. And you still see that I'm not using a chest piece. I was for a little bit, but then I de-equipped it because I got the helmet with the blue links. But yeah, you want to move your gems around, make sure that you've got a lot of single target. And Blight, you know, you can say a lot of nasty things about it, but it's got quite a bit of single target. So as long as you don't do poorly with the adds, you can get quite a bit. You can also see that I wait uh, for quite a while to kill the adds. The reason for that is because I pop my Blood Rage and try to get as many Frenzy Charges as possible. Unfortunately, we only got one, but it does help with the boss fight, and it's a smooth one. I mean, snap. So also another thing, most people wait here until the pyramid opens. You don't have to do that at all. After Vol has been slain, you've already got the waypoint to the next zone. And we finally, Act 3 Entrance, we get Movement Speed Boots. I don't think I can equip them because I need the two green, but uh, yeah, you've got, the, you've got the waypoint to City of Sarn. And you don't have to worry about waiting for that pesky pyramid to finally erupt through the earth at all. Ban all the jokes. <laughs> and yeah, something you can you can keep your single target set up. I switched back to the contagion, but generally you can keep your single target set up for this. Just because uh, this guy tends to be pretty tanky, but essence drain is also OP OP, so why not? Clarissa, she, she's an old lady, so she takes a while to stand up so you can run around while she's standing up, kill some more mobs, get some contagion spreads going, and uh, yeah, just make sure you ID those boxes like I did over there. Yeah. It's nice if you have an SSD, if not, loading screens are a pain. I mean, you're on a loading screen either way, no? I guess you're on one less loading screen. But yeah, again, I'm constantly trying to fix my links, and there you go. I chromed my chest piece. I take the effort because movement speed chest, uh, equipping a chest piece is minus three or minus five movement speed, I think. So equipping boots with movement speed, especially compared to my wide boots, that's a pretty big deal. So I use a chrome. I get my chest piece. Obviously, having a little bit more evasion is kind of a big deal too. Like we mentioned before, we want all the evasion on the world, and uh, I make that unfortunate sacrifice to continue to level as fast as possible. And also, we get to show off our cool MTX anyway. So, hey, that's a bonus. IT boxes don't don't do what I did. Don't do that. It's gonna bite you in the ass. I promise. You're gonna have a freeze box, and you're gonna be very sad. The reason why I did that, I think, was because I had Contagion on the mobs that were next to me. So if the mobs would have popped up and I would have been frozen, then the Contagion would have killed the mobs before they would have killed me. But either way, don't do it. It's not smart. As far as I'm concerned, Crematorium doesn't have uh, any sort of indicator whether you're supposed to go left or right. But what it does have is a trial. So you want to run the trial because we've got the three other trials, the three remaining trials are in Act 3, we won't immediately be doing our lab, but it is a pretty big deal that we get this lab done in a timely manner. And if we're already in crematorium, why not run the trial? Easy peasy. Again, we get an exile. Want to kill that exile? We get a ruby ring. That's especially nice. So an exile, surprise, surprise, is like a character that's like wearing gear. So an exile generally will drop an entire set of gear, which is kind of a big deal because sometimes it drops rings that are rare, that happen to be ruby rings, that happen to have extra fire resistance. So this ring in particular has like 50 fire resistance, which is super useful 
considering that everything's casting flammability here, and it actually allows us to ca to run uh, through the fire, despite the fact that just three seconds ago we would have been burned to a crisp in uh, an approximately 0.5 of a second. But this speeds us up significantly, and obviously you want those resistances because you want to be prepared for Kitava, for Zaro, for after Kitava, where you're going to be needing a little bit more resistance. A little bit more, because this is drain outside of the sockets themselves, generally gets, you know, quite a bit of resistance through gear because you don't have to be picking up anything else, right? You don't have concerns such as... Should I be using this ring because it's got physical damage, but it doesn't have a lot of resistance? Or should I be using that because it's got elemental damage or weapon elemental damage or maybe even regeneration or leech, whatever? You don't have to worry yourself about that. You're essence drain. You just smark everything right in the face and things die and you're happy. And you can get resistances. It's super easy and nice. Sometimes it's nice. We do Karima. We talk to Clarissa. She's like, boohoo. My my dude is dead. So you see, I might have done something questionable there, but you should be doing this too. So I found a regret orb, which isn't quite an alchemy, but in our case it is because you can actually get a regret orb and you can buy a alchemy orb from Clarissa. You know, you're the rebound. She's like boohoo, my husband fried on a chair, and you're like you know what, I'm a scammer, and then you take her alchemy orb, because she doesn't know the new meta, she doesn't read reddit, she doesn't know that alchemy orbs just... she doesn't know. So she thinks that's a worthwhile trade, she thinks she's actually scamming you, right? She's one of those, she's like, uh, she knows exactly what she's doing, but uh, she just isn't aware of the facts, she doesn't know, reddit hasn't told her that there's no more alchemy orbs in the world, and this regret orb is actually, like, not even half of an alchemy. So we get that stuff, try and pay attention to some four links, which one actually dropped there, I go back for it. The reason for this is because this little helmet has the appropriate colors for our shield charge, which we should have been uh, prepared for previously, right? We're constantly thinking about those color setups. We're looking for a shield charge, faster attacks, fortify setup. Which is especially useful with this because there's two decisions that you can make with this uh, when leveling. You can either rush Mind Over Matter without picking up Written in Blood and Atropy. Or you can instead rush Mind Over Matter and be a little bit more tanky. However, I personally think that you are more than tanky enough uh, with this sort of setup without the mind over matters, so don't concern yourself about that. Oh, we actually got a four link, hey. And I'm trying to get the right colors, but I can't get the right colors, so it's kind of annoying. I don't concern myself with that, so I focus on getting the fortify working as soon as possible. It's not really necessary all the way until, you know, act five, but even in act four, sometimes it might help a little bit, but as long as you're running, you know, around 800 life, uh, should be fine either way, even on fights as Malachi, such as Malachi. And if you're trying to speed ride, you know, you've probably played for a while and you kind of know what you're doing. And you're just looking for that little bit of an extra edge on a league start, which goes a long way. You know, a lot of people are like, well, what's the big deal? It's kind of a big deal because, yeah, sure. Uh, are you saving that much time by knowing how to, how to speed run? Well, depending how bad the player that you're racing against is. It might be a lot, or it might not be a lot at all, but generally, people in PoE, they're kind of bad. So, if you know how to level fast, and you're putting yourself even an hour before anybody else in maps, that's an hour longer that you can map, that's an hour longer that you're going to be getting items that these other players will want to buy from you. And it makes a pretty goddamn big difference, so do keep it in mind. It's very helpful. Good damn, these ignite changes gonna be riled up. Hey man, somebody's gonna be watching this video from like six years from now, and he's gonna be like, "Lol, ignite changes, what a joke." Did I call out to kid dog? No. Why would you concern yourself with leveling faster if you can just buy your items for real life money? Lol. <clears throat> That's 50 minutes of sleep. That too, you know. Maybe if you're in maps for an hour earlier. Maybe two hours, maybe three hours earlier. 
It's three hours longer than you can sleep at the start of a league. No problem, dude. You choose your schedule. Sleep? <laughs> who knows? Oh yeah, and to anybody who is potentially watching this on YouTube in the future, um, this is preparation for the flashback race in May after uh, during Beast Cherry League. So, just a little bit of a ballpark. We don't know if Beast Cherry is in the game. We don't know anything, but maybe it is, maybe it is not. I think it is. Alright, so, we get all the appropriate waypoints. We don't run market... What's the name of that zone? I always forget. Zone with the trial, marketplace... They changed the name of it. Or they changed the names and then I, I'm always confused. But we don't run that. We do pick up the waypoint where the statues are. And we continue. We pick up the waypoint in Battlefronts because we want to run Solaris as fast as possible. And then we don't want to run all the way back from Marketplace. So if you pick up that waypoint or if you leave a TP behind, you can go back there from the waypoint in Solaris. Which is pretty essential because we don't have the items just yet. But the reason why you want to do Solaris before you do docks is because Solaris, as you can see, is level 27 and 28, while docks is actually level 29. And level 29 is quite a bit higher. I believe I am quite over level, like I mentioned uh, before. I'm trying to be as over level as possible. I think I'm either 24 or 25. Not quite sure, but generally when you're entering docks in like a real speed run fashion you're either going to be 23 maybe 24 23 and a half is what i typically see and you kind of want to focus on getting as much xp in docks as possible because that zone generally has uh very good density with very good mobs those blue packs really help out a lot yeah but you have to make sure that you remember when we discussed how it's plus three levels and then one level every 16 levels. So you might notice that when you're level 23 and Docs is 29, then technically on average it should be, you know, that's six level that's a six level difference, and it should be about a five level difference. So you're not getting a hundred percent XP, but you're still getting really good XP. And you're going to be hitting level 24, which will be like 96% XP or something. But at 23 in dogs, you're going to be getting like 70, 70 something, I think. So just do keep that in mind that even if you're not doing an essence drain speed run, you got to pay attention to your experience. But with essence drain specifically, I personally, and again, I have to mention that this is from a personal experience. I personally really like uh just having a little bit more levels you know makes it quite a bit safer it's very easy to get levels in essence drain it really doesn't take up any time because generally you're pay you're killing entire big packs of mobs and not just like individual mobs uh like you would with many other skills so it's it's quite a bit easier and the more levels you have the easier the mobs are to kill and on top of it you know uh you're increasing the probability of Lisa not closing the door. Hmm. I'm gonna close the door. You're increasing the probability of getting a four link. You know, the higher level you are, the more mobs there are, the more items drop, the more four links you get. And four links, those are super useful. As you might have noticed, we do have a four link, but we do not have the right colors on it. So we're trying to get that stuff so that we can pop off. A four link isn't actually that good, as surprising as it might sound. The only reason why a four link is really good, aha, tricky there, get that amber amulet. The reason why is because we need strength. Simple. I think this amber amulet actually rolls really well too. It rolls, it rolls all right. Two resistances in life, hell yeah. The reason why it's good is because if you were to compare it to a plus one three, three link, a plus one three link, I'm pretty sure in most cases does more damage with these abilities. However, you can only have two of those. And even more soon, when we're going to be switching to shield charge for some extra mobility, 
we're only going to be able to have zero, probably, because uh, it's hard to get on a wand, and you can... I think you can get it on a dagger, too, but then you're giving up the spell damage from the wand, but then you can craft it on a dagger. I think I don't craft it on a dagger, but I'm not exactly sure if you can get it. I think you can get it on a dagger, but either way, you should be using a dagger. But preferably... In my personal opinion, it's better to use a attack speed dagger because you should be doing enough damage and Contagion won't be holding up by itself for that much longer. You should be using a dagger with attack speed rather than a dagger with plus gems. So do keep that in mind because attack speed globally will give you a faster shield charge as opposite to a plus one gems that will only give you more damage to one out of your three abilities yeah. so it's pretty important <clears throat> she left it open no it's the other door it's the other door that she has to close but why would she be concerned with the needs of a plebeon Hey, I used an alchemy on this chest piece. Don't ask me why. Uh, I think I was thinking about the helmet and the chest piece, but I couldn't switch out the helmet, and I can't switch out the chest piece either way, because the chest piece doesn't have the right colors anyway. We're trying to get that blue, blue, green to get that void manipulation, maybe arcane surge, maybe we're going to get enough for efficacy, but spoiler alert, we don't have enough of that stuff. We do have enough transmutes at this point, which I have put a lot of work into to acquire, and BAM! We get a Miracle Box, two Alchemy Orbs, a Stib Knight Flask, which is actually a big deal. As you guys remember, Evasion, all the way. That's what's up. Uh, and now I can use the Alchemy Orb on my helmet, which rolls okay, I suppose. But we do want to be using that Stib Knight. Um... I think I will eventually even give up a life flask for it. However, I personally do like uh, running a regular life flask and an instant life flask for leveling. But since we didn't have the instant life flask anyway, having two regeneration life flasks doesn't make much sense because it doesn't stack. So as long as your life flask is... Uh, you know, you always have the possibility to use your life flask, right? Uh, a second life flask won't really do a whole lot for you, so if you're good with your flask management, you should be really using one flask. Unless you've got instants, which kind of makes a big deal. Do you actually think... Do you think it's actually that meaningful to be running maps earlier? Yes, it makes a massive difference. I mean, it feels like you make most of your currency a couple days into the league anyway. Yeah, that's something that somebody who hasn't run maps at the start of a league would say, yes. Generally, the that's one of the biggest advantages that you can give yourself in like a league ever. It is super important that you get into maps as fast as possible. It is super important that you start putting your items out there. It's super important that you can find players who are desperate um, and will sell their items that will be more expensive in a couple days and you can just buy them from them for whatever they need at the time which is helpful for both them and for you uh, having those possibilities actually puts you so far behind uh, so far ahead that uh, yeah it's pretty huge and I mean anybody who's followed the stream really uh, whenever I did play trade leagues in the past I would make the bulk of my currency in like the first three days because I would put myself ahead and from there on I could just like control markets and uh, do whatever really the hell I wanted uh, with my currency and I would always have enough despite the fact that all I really ever wanted to do was roll new characters and just uh, get XP, right? I wouldn't have to concern myself with really attempting to trade because that currency would always be there from those early starts where you can get a bunch of items that are worth a, ball, a lot of money, you know, a couple days into the league, but at the start of a league, nobody really nobody really needs uh, a mirror of Calandra, right? If you want a mirror of Calandra or an exalted orb, nobody can really do anything with that. That's why they're so cheap early on. 
And for instance, if you get into maps early and if you've got a bunch of currency, you can uh, pick something. In my personal case, I really like flasks. So what I try to do is make it so that I'm the guy that people go to that uh, uh, they, get, they get flasks from. So if anybody needs a flask and they go on XYZ, I'm the only one selling them. And it actually makes a pretty big difference because players will get quite desperate to acquire those flasks. So that's just like a quick example of one of the th many things that you can be doing. But it's uh, it does help out quite a bit. Also, we killed Piety. Yay! My greatest nemesis is down now. Try to optimize those items. Looking for a shield. I'm looking to switch to shield charge. I don't quite have the, the chance orbs. You can see I have one chance orb, one fusing, which is a fortify, and then a blasphemy. So I'm going to be able to run the blasphemy. I finally get the colors on my chest piece. So I can start using that four link. We're going to be, have to go back to that void manipulation. But uh, I can use that chest piece now, which makes a difference. And yeah, I go for the scour alchemy, which generally isn't a strategy I would recommend. But my chest piece was so garbage that I just went for it. I went crazy, man. And my gear in general is pretty good. The only problem is obviously the sockets. As you can see, I struggle with my gloves and my boots. But uh, it is what it is, and we got to deal with it. Get that Void Manipulation, get that Clarity, soon we're going to be preparing for Mind Over Matter. We don't need the Arctic Armor anymore, and the Blasphemy is also coming up as we are close to level 31. So, why not? Clarity is great. You know, maybe we can get rid of uh, the Mana Potion even. That'd be great. Rounding up some mobs. That's another strategy that a lot of people forget about when it comes to Essence Drain. Everybody kills every pack individually because you're kind of in robot mode. But if you can pull three packs into one pack, you only have to cast twice and they're all going to die anyway. So why cast six times when you can cast twice instead for three packs that have become one big pack now? Why not get Clarity earlier? It really doesn't make much of a difference. And like you noticed, I've been struggling with blue sockets. So, there's nothing really that we could replace the Mana Potion with. Therefore... Yeah. There's not really much we could do with it outside of being even more frustrated that I don't have the blue sockets for it. Yeah. And especially now that we're trying to... Not only have the... Two... Three links... And the one four link... But we're also now going to try to have another 3 link, which is Fortify, Shield Charge, and Faster Attacks. And also, we're going to ha want to have a 2 link, which is Blasphemy and Temp Chains. And we're going to want to have at least another 2 link, preferably 3 or 4 link, um, which is Spell Totem, Wither, Faster Attacks, and maybe Increased Duration if you can really get it. But as you will see with this run, um, I have made the decision to cut down on my damage and instead go for the mobility. And this was an approach that we had to do based off of the suckers that we had. Because, yeah, again, you're going to have a limited amount of things. Um, and I won't, I won't have Wither, as you will see in the future. I won't have Wither... And unfortunately, because of that, the single target actually wasn't the best. But as soon as we do pick up with their later on, our single target goes up. So if, you've, if you're playing with friends, if you're in Trade League, or if you just have a little bit more RNG, yeah, you can absolutely get everything up and running a lot earlier. Even now, as soon as you hit level 31, you can get all those gems up and running and yeah, just go for it, man. But in our case, sadly, it was not meant to be, so you most of the time will have to make a decision. Do I want to shield charge, or do I want to continue to use the wands? In my case, I chose to shield charge. I think it was the smarter thing to do. Uh, it increased our damage, and I was hoping that we are going to get at least that two link litter, that two link wither uh, a little bit earlier, but we really didn't get it like fast enough at all. Like at all. <laughs> so, our single target is going to be a little bit iffy, but our AoE clear is good enough, and at this point, we're less and less concerned about having our uh, Contagion linked 
because it simply doesn't do enough damage to one-shot mobs anymore. You know, maybe if you had a little bit better gear, maybe if you had like a proper offhand or something, or two offhands and use contagion, uh, or two weapons and use contagion in uh, the forward link, then maybe it would hold up. And for the most part, it still does, but soon it will be uh, falling off. And we just don't want to deal with that, you know? Because if we don't get to kill the mobs, then yeah. A little bit of a spicy situation here, but we take care of business and we pick up a dagger because we're looking for attack speed or a plus one to Chaos Gems dagger so that we can start the charge of the shield. The shield charge. You can see that I'm struggling with my inventory management. I'm trying to utilize my uh, weapon swaps to get those gems nice and equipped there. I've wanted to start racing for a while. How do you suggest starting out? Well, probably listening to things like this or watching people who are better than you. <clears throat> Either looking for some general tips or specifics on whatever you want to play at that time. Yeah. Faster attacks on Spell Totem? I didn't say that. Faster casting, I said. No? Yes? Still opening old boxes, still trying to get levels. Most of the time, if you're just leveling normally, you shouldn't even be like level 28 when you're uh, fighting Dominus. If you are higher level, if you're like 30 when you're fighting Dominus, you should really think about the mobs that you're killing, no matter what the build, because generally there shouldn't be enough mobs for something like that. So your uh, running zones the same zones too frequently or you're simply overkilling and you're wasting a lot of time doing so with something like that so yeah there is a lot of RNG when it comes to um, when it comes to mob density and what sort of mobs you're going to be fighting in general and it doesn't really even out uh, at least probably all the way until maps but generally yeah still your experience will be a pretty good tell where you're making mistakes when trying to level faster. Yeah. Maybe you're killing too many rare mobs, you're sticking around for those. Maybe you're killing too many individual or like two pa two mob packs. Uh, you never really know. But if you uh, go over your own stuff and you consciously think about it when you're doing it, yeah, you're going to continue to improve and that's fantastic. Faster attacks! Can't quite shield charge just yet. Struggling quite a bit. Optimizing my inventory. I picked up Blasphemy. I don't think I pick up a f Spell Totem because I forget about it. Slash, I use up all my transmutes on something else. Kind of a big deal. have a nice mask, but I won't be able to use it. It's actually very powerful. I'm selling my TP scrolls for the Wisdom Scrolls because that's exactly what I need. Trying to get life on this doesn't work out, unfortunately. And we're just trying to clean up our, our inventory. Typically, you're going to have breaks such as these ones. And these are really the only times that you should be spending in town for uh, longer periods of time. Uh, are bef before Malachi, before Dominus, and before Kitava, right? Or maybe before Innocence. But for us, before we progress, we still have to kill the guy in Marketplace and the zone of catacombs. There you go. I knew it all along. I have a bad habit of panic popping flasks when low, aka spam the health pots, thinking I have seeding, etc. Yeah, that's something that I have struggled with for a very, very long time. Personally, flask optimization is big in Path of Exile, especially in the age of the clear speed nonsense where everybody just like fucking smashes their flask non stop. Because why wouldn't you? Right? Why wouldn't you? Um, you always have a flask charge, so just click him. But when you're leveling up and you're really trying to optimize your runs, uh, getting good with uh, fully utilizing your Quicksilver flask is a pretty big deal. And getting good with um, you know your Stib Knights and your Basalts that don't necessarily have two charges and whatnot, it, it makes a pretty big difference, especially with a Granite flask. Those things make you pretty much immortal. And yet, I see many people's, uh, many people's making the mistake of just overclicking it. And you know, sometimes it costs them their character if they're on softcore. It might cost them many, many minutes. 
And all of that adds up, and it makes a pretty big difference, so try to consciously make the decision. And if you know you're fucking up, you know, just train yourself out of it. If you know you're killing too many rare mobs, train yourself out of it. If you know you're opening boxes without IDing them, just train yourself out of it. I know, I used to do that. See that box? I absolutely ID'd that. Hey, we almost died. <coughs> I want to be slow and competitive. Kill clear speed meta. Hey. Just look at Epa. Etup. What's the problem? Right? It's gonna kill all your opponents. Isn't it better to be overleveled in these flashback events, at least compared to normal races with how much dangerous the zones are? Depends on your build, depends on your gear, depends on the situation. Uh, generally, it will be hard not to overlevel. Um, just because, yeah, there is so much stuff that is constantly being thrown at you. So you're gonna be killing more than usual, but you can just correct that, right? You can be like, oh, okay, I killed so much more stuff in that zone, uh, that now I'm way higher level, therefore in the next zone I will be killing a little bit less while also trying to keep up my flask charges, but that's really all I'm focusing on. I'm not trying to get XP, I'm just trying to get through that zone as fast as possible. And yeah, you might have gotten more XP in that one zone, and you might have overkilled and whatnot, but you haven't lost that much time as long as you don't make the mistake of continuing that pattern over and over, yeah? Also, we just got our last trial, so we are ready to do lab. I think I don't make the decision of doing lab uh, all the way until we hit... Um, where am I going? What am I doing? <laughs> huh. Footage of a new player right here. What is this guy doing? Is he trying to get to a corrupted zone? He... Is he... What's wrong with him? Okay, so quick tip. Uh, for anybody, I don't know if I was explaining something or, and whatnot. But don't do this. Just follow the road. You see how the waypoint is? Just go up. All you gotta do is go here. And that's where Dominus is. And if you wanna go to library, go to the left. Or left and up. Or up and left, sorry. It's that easy. I don't quite know what happened there, but I mean, it happens. If I know I overkill one map too hard, I was literally not touch the next map I want to run. I run too if I know for sure it isn't efficient. Sure, just make sure that it's reasonable, right? If, because certain, I've seen people make the mistake of um, having onslaught and having two potions. <laughs> Having onslaught and having two potions and just not killing anything for an entire entire zone, and that's a mistake because you want to use those potions, and if you can kill the mobs fast, then just choose the really big packs, get your onslaught, get your uh, flask charges, just keep going, right? It's not like you're never going to need XP again. You just don't need as much XP right now, so focus on the really big packs. Yeah. Can't level with it without a tabula. I mean, have you tried? <laughs> Put the plum. Don't don't do the plum. Dodge the dodge the traps. Don't die. Generally, you want to have some cold resistance for this zone because mobs will freeze you. Pick up that jeweler. It's nice. Yeah, we're just trying to get to Dominus. This is it's so hot in here. Holy shit. Lisa closed the other door. Did you guys tell her? Ooh. I see those beasts sometimes when I'm running past them. Yeah, again, this will be interesting for somebody who hasn't participated in Beast Jerry. Should mention what to skip during race certain invasion bosses and Xandra Danino. Don't skip anything. <laughs> um. Invasion bosses nowadays generally when leveling are quite simple to deal with and you really should never skip any exiles ever. Are well, you not running Arctic Armor there? I think I ran out of sockets. I think I like switched up my setup and ran out of sockets or I simply forgot. I might have forgotten. I don't know. Did 
need to drink more. Way too much talking. I would love to give you some tips on Upper Scepter of God, but I'll be honest, this stuff is... I, I don't really know how I run this. Um, I remember when everybody was doing Dominus farming and whatnot, and they were like, Oh yeah, Upper Scepter of God is easy. I absolutely understand it. Where to go, and 100% of the time. And then I was like, wait, can you explain it to me? And they'd always be like, uh... No... So I'm kind of the same now. I run it, I don't really get lost in it, but somehow I have no idea how to explain it. Other than the last level, which is easy, just go up and to the right. Can I do this to league start for next league as long as there's no changes? Absolutely, dude. This is exactly what this build guide is going to be designed for. Absolutely you can do this. That's the point of it. You can also do it for the upcoming race. That's why I'm highlighting this so that you guys can have a very competitive trickster race, you know? Shit, what not? Scepter of God, just check all the corners. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could say that about any zone, right? Just just check all the walls. Check all the corners. I mean, I can say that, but I don't know if it's particularly useful. Got a nice flask, but it doesn't have the appropriate colors. So Dominus is actually quite a bit easier than what people think. As you can see, he doesn't do a whole lot of damage, and for the most part I can face tank him, even though I'm not capped on lightning res. People generally freak out because they have no lightning res, but as long as you're paying attention to your gear when leveling up, or you have a topaz ring, which you should have from back when you were running sewers, um, you should be able to face tank him. Also, it is very important that you transmute your Quicksilver and get uh, extra resistance on it so that if there is something scary that deals damage this exact same way that Dominus does you can just pop your flask and guess what now your resistance capped and nothing really can deal any damage to you anyway also stib knights are pretty good so just try and stay alive hit that level 31 get that fortify get that blasphemy get that temp chains and increase your survivability tremendously but even now 800 hp that's a lot might not seem like a lot to many, but 800 HP is actually a lot. This is typically the amount of HP that I have when speedrunning for, uh, when speedrunning a Malachi kill. When I'm killing Malachi, I have around 800 HP, and some even consider that high in some speedrun circles. So, really, if you practice long enough, or if you've played the game for a little bit, doing stuff like this will be quite simple for you, and you shouldn't be running any into any trouble. As long as you don't stand on a trap the way I did in that one trail, then you shouldn't be even dropping low, especially with the temporal chains. Blasphemy. What auras will this be using? Uh, this will not be using auras. This will be a Mind Over Matter build as described in the Gazi's um, guide that also uses temporal chains blasphemy. And that's it. No need to worry about anything else. Be crafting so OP for League Start. Yeah, so I do I don't do it here, but you can actually get I think it's three of those white uh, birds, these guys. And also the big fat bird. This guy. And I'm pretty sure you can craft another movement speed. A pair of movement speed boots, which I don't do, but I probably should have. I probably should have. Especially considering how much I'm struggling with sockets and all this sort of stuff, and I can't get any jewelers. It's, it's kind of a big deal. I should have done it. Blasphemy makes the chains to an aura. No? Well, technically, no. It makes it so that it is a AoE around you, but it, it doesn't scale with an aura. It's not considered an aura, so it's not an aura. I know I did Merciless Lab with 1.2k life last league, so 800 does seem good that early. Yeah, that doesn't seem reasonable whatsoever. But yeah, 800 is typically where I'm aiming for uh, if I want to do like Malachi and Izaro safely. Yeah. That's typically what I aim for personally, especially with powerful uh, boss killers such as Essence Drain, because it just gives you so much room 
uh, to move around the bosses and whatnot, and you don't really have to worry about uh, their shit all that much. Yeah. Is macroing all your buttons to one button against the rules? Yes, it is. Yeah, you kill the goat man for the adrenaline flask. That's where we get our adrenaline flask, which is a big deal. It helps out a lot. Because most builds would have some form of mobility by now, but because we are so starved on the sockets, the sockets, like I could be using a wither totem right now, but I just can't fit it into my sockets. Um, and I'm trying desperately the whole time. Uh, most builds would have some sort of mobility skill, but we unfortunately can't. This build will be a powerful boss killer in red maps. It will be a safe boss killer in red maps, yeah. The power of blind. And evasion. Do keep that in mind. Evasion is a big deal. I don't have that much evasion. Oh, nice lag. Where did this help? Would this be better than your Sunder into Wonder Guide for flashback? Absolutely not. <laughs> this Essence Drain excels at being above average at everything. It's an above average map clear. It's an above average boss killer. It's an above average leveling character. It's It doesn't require a large investment to get that Blasphemy in. We are at level 31. So we are switching into, into Z-Dagger and trying to optimize our gear. So we will be lowering our damage quite a bit because we don't have the plus ones anymore. But we will have Shield Charge which hopefully will make up for all our other issues. And on top of it, we also got a 4 link pair of gloves, which is really cool. So yeah, Essence Drain doesn't excel at anything. Sunder is by far the best leveling skill in the game currently. And that is just the life. That is it. Yeah. But this is pretty fast. I mean, this isn't the best of runs. You can definitely do it a lot faster. This was just a random thing that we recorded that covered all the bases for the guides so that I would have enough stuff to talk about and explain. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. You can do it faster, but uh, I still think this is pretty fast. If you can do what I'm doing here on a league start in solo cell found you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself a top 10 spot so yeah a top 10 spot at least for the leveling period and the thing is too that essence drain the most difficult part is optimizing your gems but once you've got your gems and your gear figured out it goes significantly faster than uh, a lot of other builds and it's not nearly as uh like gear dependent when it comes to weapons and whatnot so you don't have to worry about that same way you cap out your resistances uh, with this you do it with everything else so that's not a concern for you either it's just a matter of getting there which is why we are making this guide so that you can see that struggles with the gem optimization and whatnot are okay because yeah we've got blasphemy and we've got very poorly linked uh, abilities that don't deal a whole lot of damage you can see that i fully uh, changed into Essence Drain. That is my 4 link right now. Uh, but we will struggle with the deeps a little bit. So... I need to optimize my shield. And by optimize my shield, I need an Essence Drain. Because yeah, by now our Contagion doesn't do enough, but we can Shield Charge. So we get Fortify, and uh, we've got a whole lot of more mobility. Just a lot... We're helpful. The only problem will be single target, like I mentioned, but this is strictly because we got really messed over with uh, Wither. But this is one of the worst case scenarios because you only need a two link for it. Uh, and as you can see, it's still, it still puts in the work as well. I'm gonna have a POB of this. Uh, you won't need a POB, just follow Gazi's guide. I will have it linked in the description of the YouTube video, or you can simply Google it. <clears throat> Hardest part is going no life for one week. There you go. Would you say Cyan Cyclone is a league starter? 
I started game mid abyss as ED and it was fun, but I like I like a build that can handle all content, including easy mod lab farms. Uh, so two parts to that question: How is Scion Cyclone as a league starter? Not great, uh, unless you play a lot and you have the possibility of investing money into stuff. Uh, and as for a build. You've played ED and asked for a build that can do easy mod mode lab farms and clear all content. ED is that build. If you weren't capable of doing that, you fucked up your build. Or you followed a bad guide or something. You should be able to do it with ED. You can handle any content, do any map, any boss, anything in the game you want. It's fantastic for it. Right, so after we've gotten into mines, we deal with a spooky ghost guy, but you have to remember that there is a skill point here which is pretty freaking important. Pretty freaking important because if you don't pick it up now, you're going to have to run two zones to pick it up at any point later. So make sure that you are focused on picking it up. In our case, we got a really easy layout because uh, there's only one way that you could have went in this layout and uh, the ghost was on the way, which is pretty lucky. But generally you'll find that once you run enough mines too, uh, it's actually pretty simple to go through. Like, really simple. What do you done once the story is over to be efficient early? You mean efficient in mapping? Uh, follow Carve's Atlas Guide, I guess. The Battle of the Essence Drains. We win. Good. Good call. And again, kill those exiles. Get those rings. We got an o okay ring. You know, some cast speed. Nothing crazy. Could have been much better. Would have been nice. Would have been nice. And yeah. Like mentioned before, you probably won't be this level. I think I'm already 32 or, or nearing 32. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm already 32, which is higher than you will normally be. Typically, players here without Essence Drain will be 32 um, if they've already done Lab. But we've done all our Trials and we've done all our Skill Points, but we haven't done lab just quite yet so yeah we're focusing on acquiring even more xp trying to get that waypoint and we will progress to lab which will help out tremendously uh, doing some more optimization with my gems now uh, which will help out tremendously because uh oh, oh, interesting choices here Ooh. Oh, I decide to go back to the Contagion, I guess, set up. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what this gamer is doing. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. I guess I was trying to get a efficacy and then I ended up with a three link because I'm going to buy one. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, I ended up de-equipping something off of my Contagion. Oh no, I actually ended up de-equipping something off of my Essence Drain. My Contagion is still 4 link, my Essence Drain is now 2 link due to faster casting. Yes, I think I got confused because I was just trying to go fast, but generally take your time with this sort of stuff because again, it will go a long way. Pick up a chest piece that I probably won't use at any point. And we're just trying to get to that waypoint. This will be the more boring part, I think, of this. So if you guys got any questions, go for it. Because there's not that much optimization to be done other than messing around with your inventory and trying to figure out where exactly should we be taking this and how exactly should we be doing this. But I'm basically trying to clean up my character, trying to get those resistances. I'm building for the Kitava minus resistance fight uh, or fight death. Progression? Kill. And, uh... Yeah, other than that, we're doing fantastic. 
Mm. Should you make for lunch? Pizza. I feel so sick after that pizza. Is it even worth it to get an extra Quicksilver in the very beginning? It is absolutely worth it. As long as you do it with the Beast Cherry recipe, it is absolutely worth it. You don't even necessarily have to do it with the Beast Cherry recipe. You can do it with a mule as long as you're granting yourself something else with that mule. Uh, I wouldn't do it on a melee character and I wouldn't really do it with anything else. But if you really want to get that... No, actually, I wouldn't recommend it at all because you can always just capture the fawn and get your adrenaline and have a item level 7 uh, Quicksilver that you can roll many useful things on like recovery, adrenaline, or freeze removal, or resistances. In my personal case, I really like to have resistances. Oh, I think I dropped something behind. Yeah, I dropped the Volarb, yay! Uh, I like to have a resistance flask and a uh, stun recovery flask because it just helps out a lot. <clears throat> it's not really related to the run, but how do I not... How? But how do I now fall off with damage with attack builds on speedruns? I have no idea what you asked. Not fall off with attack damage on speedruns. Uh, stay focused on your gear. Generally, the big mistake that a lot of players make, especially when speedrunning, is that they listen to how a speedrunner explains to do a run, right? Okay, you gotta do this quick, you gotta do this quick, you gotta run here, run there, and that's what they're focusing on. But unfortunately, the biggest mistake, and I think one of the toughest things as a beginner speedrunner, is figuring out that not only are you supposed to go fast and pick up all these things uh, or not only are you supposed to go fast and like um, fulfill all these objectives you're also supposed to be picking up loot um, so very often when you're watching newer speedrunners you're going to be seeing that they're using white items and whatnot for way too long not that using white items is a bad thing if you want the links that's absolutely fine but very frequently will people not focus enough on their gear and they will not take the time to do so because you know whoever told them that well you shouldn't be sitting in town and obviously what do you do in town you gear yourself up um so yeah pay attention to that don't don't like because in a lot of cases gearing yourself properly and equipping those evasion items will give you a lot more clear speed because less mobs are hitting you or they're hitting you for a lot less therefore they are not stunning you and not only is it less of a risk for your character but also you will simply uh, progress a lot faster due to that yeah. I know personally I struggled with that for the longest time and now I would say I'm one of the players that focuses more on gear and while other players might uh, sometimes have a faster early start they really slow down once it finally catches up with them and they no longer feel as safe progressing and they're like okay I really need to look into my gear now but looking into all of their gear at the same time is quite a bit tricky compared to doing it over the course of the entirety of the run. It is difficult, but with enough time you will learn to do it. I promise you. What do you think of low life Scion version of ED? I don't know if I would recommend low life ED anymore. I don't think you need it. You do so much damage with a trickster, wouldn't bother. It's best seen in Act 1. Everybody has like the same Act 1 because you don't need gear, but in Act 2 people lose like 5 minutes per act. Precisely. Ventura hit, hit it on the head, hit the nail on the head. You can really, really see it. So yeah, sometimes, you know, you're gonna have a 20 minute Mervo kill. And you might be like, wow, that's really bad. Yesterday I had a 18 minute Mervo kill. But you, what you might not be taking into account that your gear for Act 2 is significantly better because you've been paying attention and therefore uh, your run overall might be faster. So Cult CD is still better at bosses? I think so. If you can get enough deeps. Trickster just has so much DPS. 
And yeah, for this particular guide, we are running a trickster. And I will be picking up Patient Reaper first. But you're absolutely fine to pick up Swift Killer. It's just that, in terms of damage, in my opinion, Patient Reaper is better. The regeneration is a lot better. We are aiming to pick up Mind Over Matter. The on-kill effect is really good. And a permanent 50% uh, increased damage is just a pretty major thing. Rather than the, most of the time, temporary 40%. And we find an Arcanist box. The dream. Can we get the items? Yes, sir. What we're looking for here is chansorbs and alchemies and chaos and all that good shit, but preferably chansorbs. Chansorbs are very much necessary because we need to get efficacy and we get no chansorbs. We get a lot of alterations and transmutes. We unfortunately don't need those at this point anymore, but, uh, you know, can't win them all, right? A fusing would have been great too because you can buy a chansorb for a fusing. But then, uh, you never get it. Never get it. Any dot based builds is going to be better as a trickster outside of Poison Assassin. Yeah, I agree with Carve. That is very debatable. <laughs> Can you spell when this ends? This run is about 2 hours and 40 minutes. So we've got about an hour to go. Wait, no, it shouldn't be, right? No, it's about an hour. Two, I think it's two hours and 35 minutes that we kill Kitava at, but I continue for a little bit longer just to give some clarifications for later. But again, if this is too long for you and this will be on YouTube and blah, 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 then uh, they w there will be a TLDR version that you're going to be able to catch in the description of the stream or at the start it will be highlighted in the top right corner. So yeah. How do you get two Quicksilver Flasks? You get it through Beast Crafting. How far can I get away from Essence Drain Contagion mobs before I stop getting XP? Well, you keep getting XP for longer than the range of Essence Drain and Contagion. The range of Essence Drain and Contagion is about two, two and a half screens. The XP range is about three, three and a half screens. So, at least for me, obviously that will depend on your resolution and your settings and whatnot. We got something. What am I getting? Wither. Yay, we're getting the Wither. I'm also going to be picking up Spell Totem. This is actually a pretty major mistake that I made. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, get the sockets for it anyway, but I buy a Control Destruction for no reason, I think. But you should have bought the Spell Totem early on. It's very important that you get levels on your Spell Totem because every level that a Spell Totem gets grants it more survivability. So if you do not have enough uh, levels on it, you know, what purpose is there for a spell totem if you're just going to die? If it's just going to die instantly after you place it, might as well just deal some more damage. <clears throat> do, 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 do. If I could play on 8k resolution and play support, I could get big XP. Unfortunately not. So, I actually get to show off some cool tricks in here. You might have noticed that I picked up Lightning Warp. And you might be like, lol, Lightning Warp, idiot. Well, actually, Lightning Warp is super useful in Act 4. Because you can get certain skips that saves you a lot of time. Sometimes it's at the sacrifice of experience. But for instance, here, we're in a pit. So if I were to continue then these pits open and I have to fight the mobs. However, if you have lightning warp, you can skip it. See, here I messed up, I didn't skip it, and you can really see how much time clearing this takes where we could have skipped it within the second, right? So you can go for big skips like that, and I already have the experience anyway, so... Again, the, the clock's ticking, and this is something that we wouldn't have to deal with if we didn't make that mistake, yeah? And it's still ticking. We're almost on, uh, I don't know, 40 or something seconds. Almost a minute. Which, you know, could have saved us a lot of time. Also, I'm still messing around with my gems. What, Lisa? I, I knew you were here. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. 
What? I I I I sensed you. Okay. I looked I looked behind and then you moved. Well. I didn't smell you. I sensed you. And yeah, you can do this with every single one of these pits. Uh pretty much except the final one unfortunately you can't uh, you can't skip that one and I missed this one too you could also skip this one but unfortunately I was a little bit overzealous with my shield charges so uh, it is it is what it is you know but luckily these final ones typically yeah at least in my case have a nice big juicy blue pack which you definitely want to be killing no matter what and typically they're pretty short too, so in this case it actually was pretty beneficial to run this one. And yeah, there's no way to skip this one as far as I know anyway. Uh, but we do deal with the boss pretty fast. No problem. And as you might have noticed at this point, we're already running the Blasphemy, so... Really nothing ever is hitting us. Uh, Especially with that Stib Knight that's helping out quite a bit because the mobs are blinded and whatnot. Which is something that doesn't benefit us that much right now, although it is uh, useful for Izaro. As you saw in the lab runs themselves. Um, but you can get a Stib Knight also for Act 5, which is really when the tricky part happens. And where it gets a little bit difficult. So, and here we get the Dream Layout! So this layout only happens like 1 in 10 times or so. And if you get a river in the middle of the layout, you can actually perform a skip that essentially jumps through the entirety of the zone. Which is great. So you can see that I'm killing quite a bit of mobs. I get to this little spot and if you have an ability like Lightning Warp or Blink Arrow and whatnot, uh, if you practice this long enough, you're going to see that it's pretty easy to get up there and now we skipped this entire fucking huge part of the zone here and this is one of the longest zones and in the general uh, complaints from players when act 4 came out were about this zone how it was so freaking long uh, yeah if you get the right setup you just make two jumps on these two bridges and bam you're in the next zone it actually saves you a tremendous amount of time especially since your essence drain so you've got enough levels anyway right so pay attention to that it can save you a lot of time and if you're already leveling with a bow build uh, or you have a bow if you're like a duelist or whatnot uh, it's pretty it's pretty easy peasy to do so pay attention to it yeah the double skip is extremely rare like I said I already mentioned it carved that it's like 10% of the time it's rare the second skip is always there um, but it's not always as effective as some of the other ones. But that skip right there is pretty rare because you can only do it if there is the lava ri uh, lava river in uh, in the start. Do you think it's worth to respec from ED to RF later on? Would it increase the clear speed? Uh, depends. <laughs> there are really fast essence drain builds. And there are really fast RF builds, there's really fast, there's really slow RF builds, and there's really slow essence drain builds. It depends what sort of, what you want to focus on, and what sort of money you want to invest into your build. So it really depends. My opinion, essence drain is pretty fast for mapping, but if you can run like some sort of low life occultist for RF, then you're probably going to be clearing pretty fast. Or Onyu's, uh, like I saw from Onyu, the... Uh, Impulsa's RF. That was actually pretty cool. Yeah. There's something performing slaps outside of my window. Alright, comb! So, again, the Stib Knight actually helps us out quite a bit because he's blinded, he doesn't do a whole lot, but with this amount of HP. Honestly, you shouldn't be running any into any issues at any point. Just make sure to take care of his ads, and he really won't be able to hit you. Just don't get hit by the Sunder Wave that he sends out, because that's actually going to hurt a lot. Yeah, there's some gachigasm going on outside. And yeah, quite an easy fight. 
Again, something that Essence Drain definitely doesn't struggle with. And if you feel like your survivability isn't on par because you've been gearing yourself uh, worse if you're still getting ready and whatnot, just kite them around, you know? Just put on an Essence Drain, run around in circles, uh, and let him just fade away into... Obscurity. Yet again, I'm trying to optimize something. I don't know. Quite a bit of gear optimization. Don't feel too bad about it. And honestly, if you want to get into speedrunning, I would suggest Essence Drain. Just because... Uh, I was trying to get my red socket down there. Unfortunately, it did not happen. As always. So I am unable to get my Wither. Imagine my single target if I actually had a Wither. Or if I had a plus one or something like that. All of which would be tremendously helpful. Um... If you want to get into speedrunning, I do recommend Essence Drain because it's just so much to do, so much to learn. It teaches you so many uh, essential skills for speedrunning that it's almost like a like weighted training that after you do well on an Essence Drainer and you learn to do it, really any other uh, leveling build will be a lot simpler to you because you take off those weights of having to optimize 10 different abilities while leveling by the time you're like in Act 4 or in Act 5 and it helps out a lot. <clears throat> Don't you miss a lot of loot drops with this build? Nope. I mean as long as you've got your filter optimized in the right way and as long as you know uh, what you're killing then yeah. I mean the big thing basically the way you have to look at this is what is more optimal for you to Pay attention to two or three remaining mobs that are left behind that you can't see the drops off, but you can still hear the important sounds with your filter. Or moving on to the next pack of mobs instead of waiting around for those mobs. And instead dealing with that next pack of mobs of, you know, eight to ten mobs. Obviously, moving to the next pack will give you a higher probable chance of dropping something. Sure, that pack and the mo of mobs in the back could have dropped the middle of Calandra, but the pack of mobs in the front had a five times higher chance of dropping a middle of mirror of Calandra. Therefore, you know, you want to stay on the move. And really, most of the time, you do see everything dropping anyway, so it's absolutely fine. And generally, the mobs that do stay behind are mobs that you wouldn't be killing with any other build anyway. And that's definitely proven by the fact that, uh, you know, we are getting more levels than the average build should when leveling. Yeah. Completely different from this, but how would BV Elementalist be for starting new league? Uh, probably not that great. <laughs> I mean, you would probably struggle with single target. But I mean, if you play enough, anything can be good. If you have enough money to put into it, anything can be good. But acquiring and impulses and whatnot, probably a little bit tricky. <clears throat> Hyperbolic time chamber, pretty much. Yeah, essence playing Essence Drain is like being in the hyperbolic time chamber, except uh, time doesn't actually fly slower. For anybody else or you, you're just kind of, kind of wasting your life away because you're not playing Sunder. <laughs> no, it's pretty fast. I mean, again, this run was really tricky to pull off, and you can see the struggles non-stop. And uh, our time is still pretty good. I mean, all trials, all passive points, around a two-hour Malachi. That's a good time. I mean, that's something that you're definitely going to be in the top ten with at the uh, start of an SSF ladder. So, hey, if that's good enough for you, maybe that's something to look into. And again, early mapping with SSF is just so simple and so quick and so... Uh, just tanky, you know, because of Mind Over Matter and Temporal Chains that uh, many other people will need to gear quite a bit more, will need to look for more gear, that will take more time to get into maps because of that gearing thing, and you have a very smooth progression as long as you struggle through these uh, beginner acts, yeah? Do you think that with the burning changes, some skills are going to be good for speed leveling? Yeah, um, definitely. 
Firestorm especially. Firestorm will be a top leveling skill again. On an elementalist anyway. I can guarantee you that. It will actually be broken. <clears throat> and yeah, we just want to head for that Piesto. I haven't seen too many of them. I think I've only seen two. But obviously you want to be getting essences. It might seem like it takes a long time to get essences. But it's one of those things that... Uh, well... <laughs> huh. Interesting strategy. I guess I didn't... I don't know what happened there. Anyway, uh, you want to be picking up essences, especially hatred essences, such as that one, because you can slap him onto gear, and not only is it an alchemy, but it also has a deterministic affix. Um, especially something like a hatred, because it's got cold resistance, which is super helpful for when you lose your resistances after you've killed Kitava. So don't do what this guy just did. Pick up your goddamn essences and run them because they're always worth the time, honestly. Unless it's a remnant of corruption, but even then when you're on Trade League, those are worth quite a bit, so... You never know when you're going to be getting the hatred. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why I didn't loot the essence. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Unless it's a super rippy version. There's no super rippy versions for Essence Drain when you're leveling up. Red Beast Essence Monster. Can you even get Red Beast outside of... Oh, you can. Outside of maps. But it's only past a certain, certain point, I'm pretty sure. Maybe Act 6 plus? I can't remember seeing any pa like before Aqueduct. But I'm pretty sure you can only get like two Essences pre-map. Like two uh, essences in a single mob, so you're fine. Red Beast only after Act 5. There you go. Do, 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 do. And yeah, for this, my strategy is quite simple. Just do left side, then do the right side after TPing out. The bosses are, as far as I'm concerned, absolutely random. Something tricky about uh, Daudry that maybe some people don't know, she actually consumes curses. Um, so if you're running a curse, which you might have noticed I haven't been running despite the fact that I did have the possibility of running a uh, Despair for the longest time to increase my single target. Nice lag. Uh, I, I chose to not do that because of, well, I chose to. I would like to, but I didn't have the sockets to do it. But if you're running a Despair and if you run, don't run the Blasphemy setup, she actually consumes curses. Um, and that gives her unholy might and she starts dealing a whole lot more damage um, through that so if you've ever fought Daudry and suddenly she killed you and you didn't quite understand how the hell she dealt so much damage all of a sudden well, you probably cursed her, and she probably ate that shit, and she probably got unholy might, and she probably did a whole lot of damage through that to you. Um, which, you know, I've seen, uh, I've seen that quite a bit, and it's always pretty funny. So don't be one of those guys. Uh, it is a pretty unintuitive mechanic, but it will get you done. Oh, something fun happens here. So you know how I was optimizing my rings and whatnot for the comb and the rest of fight? So I need, uh fire and cold resistance well i uh i forgot to switch my rings around <laughs> so my lightning resistance isn't that great and so i switched back to my lightning resistance and now i'm a little bit more tanky but still not that great probably should use my quicksilver and there you go and that's something that you can always kind of cheat the XP system with a, with a little bit, just swapping around your rings. Since so most likely, most of the time, you're not going to have a ring that's like super powerful and you have to stick with it. Unless it's actually generating some stats for you, but even then you can swap out the other one. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. It's really nice stuff. Calculated. Yeah, I mean... A little bit of a mistake. A little bit of a mistake. I think I'm looking for some items. I'm trying to acquire chromatics. I'm not exactly sure if what for. Probably the boots. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. I got the two sockets. Can this boy... Can he do it? Oh. Got the four. Chrome it. 
Oh! And I can't link the wither because it's unlinked. And so, yeah. I would love to have a wither right now. It would increase my damage tremendously. Wither is like an insane amount of damage for single target, for essence drain. But unfortunately, I just can't fucking get my colors. <laughs> I mean, I got the colors. Now I just don't have the links. I think by the end of this run, I do have it set up. And so the Kitava fight looks very uh, easy peasy. But until then, yeah, this is this is just another struggle of an F essence drainer that uh, doesn't have any friends. Yeah, maybe Malachi. So Malachi is another boss that many people struggle with, but in all reality, he's actually quite easy to deal with. It's primarily lightning and uh, fire damage, which I have a lot of defenses for. The only source of cold damage are those little tentacles that he just did, these guys. That actually deals half of cold damage. So if you've got low cold resistance, make sure that you're not getting hit by those because they can freeze and perma stun you. So keep that in mind. Also, the traps on the ground that you see, you can actually dispose of by either throwing a trap on top of them that will proc the trap itself, or you can place a totem on top of it. These traps have a very high critical strike chance, so they will often uh, crit you, and they will often ignite you, so make sure to not step on them, especially if you've got low fire resistance. And also, don't put yourself in corners when against Piety, because she's gonna do a lot of damage. So just do keep that in mind. And in my case, my cold resistance is the low element, so no matter what, I'm trying to avoid... Um, I'm trying to avoid getting hit by the tentacles, right? Also, you might notice something that is a little bit unusual compared to what other players are doing. I'm trying to stay as close to Malachi as possible. I'm trying to bait out his attacks, and that's generally the way I fight Malachi. The reason for that is because he auto attacks and he also uses this little triple wave thing like you saw. It doesn't do any damage. In comparison to his other attacks, this little auto attack and that triple wave thing, especially if you're building the gear the way we are, like you just saw, it doesn't do anything. So imagine how many times you're in a pickle because Malachi keeps using the tentacles or he keeps using... Uh, you know, he keeps throwing the, the triple, triple poop bolts or uh, he keeps teleporting around or he just keeps avoiding you or slamming you and whatnot you can avoid all of that if you just stay on top of him especially if you've got fortified just make sure that you've always got it up and he really won't be able to do much to you right which is really cool he might hit you like you saw I lost half of my life but that was at the end of his attack and so it doesn't do a whole lot so I know all your instincts are telling you to avoid the Malachi and stay as far away from him as possible, but in reality, you should be as close as possible, and it will be a much simpler fight for undergear characters than what you might possibly imagine. At least in normal, you know. I wish the damage types with bosses were a little more clear. I mean, it's kind of clear. I guess the, it's not very clear what deals fire damage and what deals lightning damage sometimes, or whether or not it's hybrid. And yeah, we've made it to Act 5, 2 hours and about 5 minutes. We've picked up our golem, which I probably should have done a while ago since we were level 34 for a while. And uh, I'm trying to rile up as many mobs as possible just to get as much XP as possible. I think there's an upcoming logout here. Uh, now that I think about it. Is there? I think I, I do something stupid here. Or not. Okay, never mind. I thought I'd do something stupid. I don't do anything stupid. Just kill the exile, try and get those items, try and prepare ourselves all ready for the inevitable Kitava fight and the inevitable inevitable uh, minus resistances that we will be hit by once we die to him. I think Kitava kills us. I'm not exactly sure. That's pretty much it. So in this zone, a lot of mobs deal lightning damage, so you want to be... Uh, 
having as much lightning res as possible. Pretty much the one resistance that you can constantly, uh, consistently uh, neglect. I think I mess around with my rings a little bit here, but I figure something out. Yeah, the one res that you can consistently neglect is cold when leveling up in the first six acts, acts, uh, including act six, except. Ranking, but really the lightning is more scary there than the cold um, But there are certain zones like Daresso and Like for instance upper scepter or ancient pyramid that you need lightning re uh, that you need cold resistance for So in general if you're playing you're gonna be your safest with fire res and with lightning res and for those specific zones uh, That do have those cold mobs that you don't want to get frozen by uh, just equip a sapphire ring and you'll be absolutely fine. So that's why you're going to be seeing me having multiple different rings and trying out different resistance setups and whatnot and seeing what will bring me the closest on average to have uh, capped, out fire res uh, capped out resistances across all my resistances and whatever isn't capped out through something like that I can cap with my transmuted Quicksilver that you get from the Act 1 um, Hellrake mission, yeah. So, your Quicksilver isn't just meant to be utilized as something that you can just move to the next pack through. You can also use it as a defensive mechanic as we've showcased in this guide uh, a couple times already, yeah. Or in this podcast, though, Guido, Thingo, commentary, yo. Something like that. Be sure to utilize that shit, yeah. Also, this guy does a lot of lightning damage, so be careful, because if you stand in that, it will deal a lot, a lot of lightning damage. The other thing is an attack. This thing is a spell, so there's no way of, no way of evading your way out of it, and uh, yeah, it will, it will kill you. It will kill you, <laughs> so be careful. What do you use for customizing your loot filter in preparation of a speedrun? I uh, use Stupid Fan Hobbit's loot filter and I optimize it through Notepad++ because it's a filter that you can very easily... Um, that you can very easily just edit through Notepad++. That's the way it's just designed. Um, but I think other people use Filter Blade and whatnot for uh, other loot filters. It's just that for my needs. I don't find it necessary whatsoever because, yeah, it's just, it's just useful like this. <clears throat> also, here, I don't know if anybody ever, well, people notice it, but generally you can skip a lot. You see how the years blockades, there's these little things that are just uh, little cracks in the in the in the walls or little little broken bars if you see that you can leap slam up it and you can lightning warp and you can flame dash and you can just move through it so if you're ever struggling how to get through the zone just try to look for these little things that I'm jumping across right now and make sure that you get through them also if you're looking for the skill coin because you do get a skill point from the Mia's meter that we just picked up it's in the top left most of the time, anyway. Sometimes it's like middle left-ish, but most of the time it's top left, and most of the time also it just leads further into the instance, which is also nice. Like, nice and dirty. Does anyone know if invasion bosses have reduced cursed effectiveness? Of course. My ass meter, exactly. Do spellcasters just do lab really late compared to Sunder melee? Um, not really. Most people uh, do it when they've got a decent weapon on a melee character compared to a spellcaster. It just scales naturally. Uh, or whenever they have, if they're a good player, whenever they have like 700, 750 HP. Or whether they reach enough uh, skill points in the tree that makes it so that it's fast enough. What you have to keep in mind is that, yeah, the faster you do lab, the faster you're going to start progressing. But the later you do lab, the faster you will do lab, right? Because your character naturally becomes more powerful. So you're always trying to optimize that part so that lab is not just uh, like a f fast freebie 
or a safe freebie, but it's also a fast freebie, yeah? You definitely got to focus on that because very often I'll see people who are like leveling a dead eye, for instance, and they really want Tailwind. And Tailwind is a really good node for speedrunning, like incredibly good. But the mistake that they're going to make is the second they've got trials and most of the time it's around level 27, 28, they will just instantly like fuck Dominus. Not, sometimes even fuck piety i'm not even doing piety i'm gonna go do lab i'm gonna kill this hour and what they find themselves uh, what they find themselves is that they just can't do it or they can do it but it's super slow uh, it just takes way 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 too long so try and find a nice middle ground generally if you're able to deal with dominus in a timely fashion you're probably gonna have a good time with uh is arrow too but don't do it too early because it might just cost you more time than save you and you might have to log out you might die you might uh, just take way too long for it to ever be worth it rather than just waiting two or three more levels to maybe pick up a weapon or get a fortify or get some sort of skill gem at level 31 that's going to help you out or get it just a couple more passive points so it's actually a pretty big deal also, the cool part about Essence Drain is that this zone, to many people, Act 5 is the most difficult act, and that's one of the coolest parts about Essence Drain, is that for Essence Drain, it's one of the easiest zones, because generally mobs in these zones have block and spell block, which a lot of people struggle with, justifiably. Uh, however, these mobs don't have a whole lot of life because of that. They've got very annoying defenses that makes killing these packs very inconsistent. But, for Essence Drain, because we use a degen, that's not an issue whatsoever. So even though many builds would struggle with these mobs right now, like a Sunder build even, you wouldn't be able to one-shot them most of the time unless you've got a decent weapon. With Essence Drain, you actually get through Act 5 really fast, so... Do keep that in mind, then. That's one of the places where you can really get ahead compared to other players without having to worry about survivability too much, because for the most part, it's just um, basic attacks that they use. And with the temporal chains, blasphemy, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. Yeah, Act 5 is really easy to navigate through. Uh, a tip for Templar Courts, every now and then you're going to see a little bit of a hole in one of the bookshelves. And you're going to be seeing that a lot more when you're running back through these, when they're the Burning Courts after you've killed Innocent. But even here, you can catch it every now and then. And you can actually Lightning Warp and use any mobility to get through those, which can also help you quite a bit. But in our case, yeah, leading up to here, it seems like we don't have to uh, even look for those because it's just a very straightforward route. Maybe, maybe in the zone back, you're going to see it. And now we are entering the biggest gem in the Essence Drain leveling arsenal, which is the Chamber of Innocence. This zone is huge. It's super useful because, like we mentioned, the mobs are generally super easy and you can really get so many levels in here without wasting a second that uh, you should definitely go for it. You should explore all of these areas because each one of these corners with the little cathedrals leading up uh, has a blue pack or two at the top of it. So you see that I just hit level 39, I believe, and just pay attention to how much XP I'm getting for this pack. I'm at three bars. I kill a pack and a half, boom, two bars. That's 10% of a level. And you see multiple of these, and there's packs in between, and you can just, like, get a roaming blue pack. So this zone, if you are somehow under level, will be your farming zone for the most part. But for many builds, they have proximity shields, they have block, they have, like, annoying resistances, like these guys have fire resistance. It's very annoying stuff. But... With Essence Drain, it's something that you don't necessarily have to concern yourself with. So, you want to make a full circle here because it will be the most efficient XP that you can get for its time. 
uh, throughout the entire run, pretty much. I don't think there's a better zone for Essence Drain when it comes to farming. At least I can think of, especially considering that so many builds right now are looking to get as many skill points as possible so that the Kitava and the Innocence fight is simpler. Trying to equip those level 41, you know, 40 items. Uh, that was typically, like, the required level for another uh, resistance tier. Um... Just so they can do innocence and just so they can get their whole old flasks at 42 or trying to get enough experience so that they can get whole old flasks at 42 uh, so that they can equip them for kitava all of this stuff is a really 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 big deal and you see there's another one with another massive blue pack and i've pretty much gotten an entire level in this zone already which helps out a lot, because you can always count on this, right? This isn't a random event. These mobs are always here. So, you can always calculate and assume, okay, I'm going to need this much XP in this zone. But you know that at the end of the day, if you go through this zone correctly, you're going to be getting like a level and a half, right? And, I mean, nothing really stops you from going through it again if you really want experience. I personally had enough. So, we continue. I would like to have Mind Over Matter here. It is kind of weird that I actually ended up being only level 40 for Innocence. I will be level 42 for Kitava, which is typically what I aim for. But considering how much over leveled I was throughout the, throughout the entire run, I am a little bit surprised that uh, I'm only level 40. But I mean, it sort of worked out, so why not? Do you keep light when you go into maps? I mean, most people keep light, yeah. But most people use allopathy gloves for it. So, yeah. Would you ever go Temptress Plus and Feeble on Blasphemy on this build? I wouldn't because personally I think Mind Over Matter is king and Enfeeble on Temporal Chains is just very demanding because then you have to scale into... You have to get a second curse through something that will be very demanding or you have to scale into curse effectiveness, which is good, but... Uh, yeah. Pick up Blight Gem. Yeah, we've been using Blight pretty much since the beginning. Massive blue packs at the end of the zone. Yeah, it's always really nice. So yeah, Innocence. Um, I don't remember if there's any lightning damage in the Innocence. Oh, no, there is. Um, so he deals fire and physical damage with most of his attacks. Except I think lightning damage being the only exception where he charges away and leaves those sparks behind. I think that's the only source of lightning damage and also obviously the the big sparkly ball thing that you're not supposed to get hit by no matter what. Um, so don't get hit by that either way. If you are in a tough spot and he is using that attack, just make sure you uh, TP out and just wait for a little bit when you come back. Then yeah. It will, it will help you a lot. But yeah, Innocence got two phases. Spoiler alert. Um, if we had a Wither, it would help a lot. But we don't have a Wither. But our damage is still pretty high. Try to avoid all of his attacks. Kite him around if you have to. If you've got the time, try and use your Blight. Obviously, if you would be a level or two higher, I opted to go for the Mind Over Matter. And get rid of uh, my mana flash just so I can get the extra 200 HP so I can have a little bit more. Pretty sure that's the lightning stuff. Um, but at this point, after you've killed Innocence, you will be able to equip a jewel uh, for your Blight Gem, which will help you out a little bit. It's not that big of a deal, but it does help out a little bit. And you've got spots where you've only have one socket that you have to equip. Yeah, don't get hit by this. Also, again, if you use a TP here to exit out of the zone, um, then just wait for a second, right? Just to make sure that those things clear up, the little balls on the ground clear up. Because most of the time, they're not there anymore, because you, you changed the way the mechanic worked. But sometimes I've seen uh, them just being invisible and people just move instantly and then they, then they die. I'm not exactly sure. This is like one of the only fights where it seems to be random. Most of the time they either disappear, like the on the ground effects or after uh, you leave effects, they just disappear. 
Um, or they are invisible consistently, but in this fight, I've seen them sometimes disappear and sometimes turn invisible. So I don't really know <laughs> what it's dependent on, <laughs> quite frankly. And they also desync. They're not exactly where you see them on the screen either. So even if you think you can dodge the balls because you're like not hiding behind a pillar, but there's like a big angle on them and you can you can just barely get through in the middle of them, don't do it. Because <laughs> most likely you're going to be getting hit by invisible balls and they deal a lot of damage. In the current state of my character with 1300 life, I think I have about 65 or so lightning resistance. I uh, I would die from it, from just two balls hit, maybe even one on a crit, I'm not exactly sure. They just deal so much freaking damage. Also, don't get hit by the statues, that's another mistake that a lot of people make. So the big statues that walk around and attack very slowly, they don't seem particularly scary. Well, their cleave actually deals like 1500 damage. <laughs> uh, so don't get hit by that, because if they do hit you, you, you will die. That's actually one of the scarier attacks in the Kitava fight, in the Innocence fight, but you rarely ever notice it because they're so goddamn slow. But if they do hit you, it is a cleave attack and it will deal a tremendous amount of damage. Like, like a lot. It will really surprise you because it doesn't look like that much. But those statues are one of the things that hit you the hardest in that fight without being like a sequence of abilities, yeah? So that's why I keep randomly dying in this fight. Yeah, unfortunately, when it comes to like, I don't know, GGG is just kind of bad with optimizing balls and flying things. And yeah, doesn't really work particularly great. So try and avoid it. But also, at this point, like I mentioned, you want to get level 42 for the holod flasks. I don't think I do anything about that. I'm not really concerned about it because my defenses are so high. Uh, the reason why I want these levels is because I want to get my last skill point. Um, and I also want to get two more levels so that I can pick up the... Ooh! Sniped it! Finally, guys! Level 40? Almost level 41? I'm finally able to equip Wither. Here we go. I can't use my... Uh, I can't use my clarity, but that's fine. I can use my wither. Hell yeah, let's go. Hallelujah. So I'm trying to get my last skill point and also two levels on top of it. So you're going to see me resetting the zone leading up to both the uh, Reliquary and uh, the Kitava fight. Just so we can get that little bit of extra XP. And really, if I was a good player, I would also optimize my flasks. And meanwhile, considering that I have transmutes and alterations. So attempting to get an instant potion is a good thing. But yeah, I don't do it. And you can also see the reason why we get Patient Reaper. Honestly, when it comes to Trickster, you can't get Swift Killer, you can't get Patient Reaper, you can get uh, Walk the Ether, I think, the Mana Node, because it's so much attack and cast speed, it's actually huge amounts of utility. Um, and on top of it, obviously, it's basically extra HP considering our mana uh, and MOM. It's actually super useful, but. I personally like the damage and I like the regeneration effectiveness and I also like the region from the uh, recently killed dot effect because we, if we do lose like a bunch of mana this really helps out and you can see that regenerating I believe what is 2% of maximum mana per kill actually helps us sustaining our mana really well because we don't run a mana potion anymore and since we can't equip the clarity our regeneration is basically non-existent and yet uh, our mana is almost always at full outside of the bo the packs that we sometimes uh, don't get to kill just yet. Gotta optimize our MTX game. I think I didn't equip a, a book for my wither. That's tragic. It's terrible. <clears throat> and you can see I am picking up the blight jewel which is called spreading rot and it's a pretty strong jewel but unfortunately the debuff effect the increased damage taken by mobs hit by blight only works for the duration of the hinder so if the mob doesn't have a hinder on it i'm pretty sure the damage doesn't get dealt so or the damage isn't increased that the mob takes so do keep that in mind that it's not just like, oh, if the mob is affected by Blight, then it's taking X increased damage. I think it's 
it's like a large amount. It's like 25% more damage or something. Maybe 15. Can't remember. It's only when the mob is hindered, which is a very tiny portion of Blight. And it's hard to refresh when... Uh, it's hard to refresh when you're continuously dealing single target damage to the boss itself. But... The important part is that we do have our Wither by now. And this Wither will help out a lot with the Kitava fight. You're going to be seeing that the Innocence fight, despite our wonky uh, setup right now, the Innocence fight was pretty easy, but that was without the Wither, and the Kitava fight will be significantly easier with the Wither. I'm also picking up a Affixi because I finally got a Chance Orb! Hell yeah! I can get rid of my Arcane Surge, which is a ton more damage. If you could have gotten this a lot earlier... Yikes, dude. Wither plus efficacy on Blight and Essence Drain? That's just crazy. So again, pepper your Angus because the Kitava fight is going to be a quick one. And this is something that you could have gotten earlier again with just a little bit more RNG. But we really struggled with Chance Orbs that are now dropping in uh, large amounts and we really struggled with transmutes because if you've noticed uh, most of my transmutes didn't drop most of my transmutes were from vendor and gear which was something that takes up a lot of time if you're just constantly picking up those yellow items and not iding them oh that's the log out my bad i uh clicked the freeze box box on accident and instantly logged out just to be sure that there's no uh silly billy accident but, uh, what was I talking about? Mm, optimize, wither, I don't know, a bunch of stuff. Anyway, damage, let's go. <laughs> also, pick up your quality gems. We do Frostblade speedruns in the next days. I will do many Frostblade speedruns in the next days. Kitava himself is a joke, the hard minion wave though. Yeah, I'll talk about the Kitava mechanics too, because it seems like one of those fights that not a lot of people understand either. And I sometimes struggle with it a little bit too. Um, but uh, you basically have to pay attention to like what he does. It just gets a little bit tricky with like the obscured vision of certain abilities and whatnot, so yeah. Oh, Vendoring, right. So, when you're picking up a lot of items and you're vendoring a lot of items, it actually takes up a lot of time uh, to try and get those transmutes. It might not seem like a lot, but I mean, if you're Tetrising, you know, a multitude of items and in the meanwhile, you could be just killing more monsters. And I try to do both things at the same time, but there's always going to be a drop off, especially with things like... Uh, Sunder and whatnot, things that can constantly use Leap Slam, and that's really where their power comes from. Same for Essence Drain, really, because of the Shield Charge. Uh, you can always be doing something useful, and if you have to be dealing with your items at the same time, then it takes up a lot of time versus just picking up a single item. Uh, you have to pick up more, right? With a Transmute, you just pick up one item that takes up one slot, rather than multiple items that take up multiple slots. And, uh, yeah, it really helps out to have that sort of RNG, you know? The same for, like, an SSF League where you don't have to pick up a six socket anymore. So you stop picking up six sockets, all of a sudden you're mapping a lot faster. And, yeah, I make a new instance. So after I've done the Relic Ray, I make a new instance and I run back. The reason for this is because I want this level. I want this level a lot. Because I want to get that last final mana note so that I can, uh... Have a little bit more mana for the Kitava fight. 1,200 HP. Absolutely fine. That is great amounts of HP. We shouldn't get one-shot by anything. But with the extra buffer of about... I think I'm going to have about 400 energy shield. Or uh, 400 mana. Um, yeah, this will be more than sufficient defenses. Even if you make a major mistake uh, during the fight itself. But hopefully with some of the explanations that I'm going to give. Uh, you won't be making the same mistakes uh, that I've made in the past. Also, I'm pretty sure I almost die on the Kitava fight because I do something stupid, but I'll talk about that too. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. God, my voice is dying. Do, 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 do. So as you can see, this is pretty much the only zone. The previous zone is pretty much the only zone that we re-ran 
But I mean, we would have to re rerun it anyway. And getting mobs in there is fine too, because if we rerun an empty zone, then we can't get our Quicksilver charges, so technically it's still slower. As long as we can kill fast enough. Yeah, about 480 mana, 1200 HP. That's a lot. As long as you can keep up your mana, that's a freaking lot, and you should absolutely be fine for this fight with these uh, things. Also, Kitava deals a bunch of fire damage too, so be cautious about that. Most of his attacks are fire, uh, fire physical, so have some fire resistance, but you should already be prepped up about fire resistance because of the Azara fight, which also deals a bunch of fire resistance. So you can now see that with the Wither, and with the Blight, Kitava just gets absolutely fucking demolished. I tried to keep my Golem up just because we've got so much mobility. It doesn't really matter for us much. And yeah, the core aspects of how to deal with the, with Kitava, well, is pay attention to his hands. So I'm going to be talking from the perspective of his hands. Or maybe from our perspective. Okay, our perspective, right? So right now he's using his left hand. So... His right hand has this attack, which is the X that zooms in. That's half fire, half physical damage. And you basically not only want to avoid the big X, but also the small ones, because they also deal about 75% of the damage of the big X. So if you get trickled in by two of them, it's a big deal. On the hard phase, when you're dealing with adds, many people say that this is the hardest part of this. But for us, it's actually one of the easiest parts because of the large amount of AoE that we have and the fact that the Wither can hit the Heralds and the heart at the same time. So as long as you just blight it up, we're fine. So if he goes across, he does one of those like across crunches. He's going to be using uh, his swipe like you just saw. And like we mentioned before, if he raises his right hand, he's doing the X. If he uses his right hand to reach in the floor, he's using the spreading out degen. Some people, you might want to just wait it out. If you TP to town, TP back in, and you just wait for a second, it will just go away, and Kitava can't do during that, do anything during that either. Um, also, for this hard phase, so I think I get really impatient here, but I'm, I'll explain something in just a second. And as for his left hand, or our left hand from our perspective, again, raises his hand, right? Does the X. If you see him raise his hand and it glows like this, he will send out the wave, right? And that wave is really the scary attack, and that's what you want to avoid the most. Also, do keep in mind that Kitava queues up attacks, so sometimes he will attack a location that you've been at three or four seconds before, even sometimes upwards of, and it's very important that you're never staying in the same spot where you were in the last three or four seconds because uh, yeah you can run in a lot of trouble with that that's pretty much it as for the ads too so there you go I almost rip here so the reason why I almost rip is because these guys use a sunder like attack that deals a lot of damage but you can clearly see it you see how it spawns if he's slamming the ground and there's a projectile coming towards you this is the projectile that will deal a lot of damage. So that's specifically what you want to be avoiding. Getting overrun by these adds and these little guys isn't nearly as big of a deal as getting hit by this Slammeroni. Especially if you're surrounded by like a whole bunch of stuff. Because I'm pretty sure it has some sort of seismic hit something. But I'm not 100% not sure. But you could see that it actually hit me for like a solid 1,400 damage. Which is more than uh, Kitava Slams can hit you with. So try and pay attention to those whenever they do reach down to perform a slam. Just move out of the way. It's very slow. Just pay attention to it and don't make the same mistake as I did. Yeah. And yeah. Kitava himself dies really fast, especially with Wither. It really gives you an idea of how fast this can be, even with a wonky uh, damage setup while having Wither. And I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I mentioned before, we're only going to be explaining to Kitava because all the gems and the Contagion and the Wither and the Blight and the Shield Charge is pretty much all you need. At this point, your character is fully decked out and ready to progress. You want to be equip your, equip your Spreading Rot and follow Gazi's guide on how to do this. <coughs> because... Uh, 
Yeah, that's mostly what this is referring to. Gaia, Gazi does have some leveling stuff, but uh, yeah. And also, if this was too long to, for you, if you're not interested in these sort of commentaries, there will be a TLDR version of this uh, with all the available information just in a very compact manner that won't be explaining general leveling tips, but it will be explaining um, how to do this specifically for Essence Drain and when to move what abilities where. Yeah? So... That should be somewhere on the screen, or was on the screen before, or should be in the description if you aren't watching on YouTube. But uh, that's pretty much it. A solo cell found, start of the league, essence drain, 2 hours, 35 minutes, all skill points, all trials, normal lab, get that one killed.